Hello, hello. Welcome. Today we are going to crack down on some major hair mistakes, mistakes that I see all the time. And we're going to answer your questions live. So if you've got questions about your hair, about anything, uh, this is the time to ask. I am joined here with my, or by my beautiful wife, Diana. Hello. You guys, most of you probably know who she is, right? Yeah. I, I would say so. So, I hope so. maybe. Here, here's the thing we're going to answer any questions. So we've got a few questions from you already that we uh, got from the Instagram community as well as the community here. So we've got some questions that we're going to go through, but if you've got a specific question right now that you also want to make sure you answer, there is a chat right over here that is really starting to pick up. Hey, everybody. Hello. Hello. Uh, Sharon. Hello. And miss, I can't read and miss Sam something. Miss Sam. <laughs> hello. <laughs> hey, Linda, how are you? <laughs> Waiting patiently. Aww, Linda. Me. Stephanie, hi. Everybody, you guys, hello. East Coast hello. Mamas. That's right. That's right. This is going to definitely be as East Coast. Um, so first of all, before we dive into the questions, I do want to throw out one massive hair mistake that I see because this is probably what I see more than anything else. This is kind of an overwhelming mistake. And that is simply not understanding that there's more that damage your hair than just heat. Now, the reason that I bring this up is because I cannot tell you how many times I've heard people say, I would never flat iron my hair. I would never use a curling iron. I can't imagine blow drying my hair. I need to let it air dry. All of these things that they're really hindering their ability to get the look that they want, but they're not recognizing all of the other things that are actually, in many cases, even potentially more damaging than the short amount of time that they would be adding heat to their hair. So for instance, stuff like using the wrong shampoo or conditioner, shampooing, shampooing or conditioning too often, products that build up, eating unhealthy has a massive impact on your hair health, right? There's a lot of things. Using a blow dryer in the wrong fashion, using the wrong brush or using the brush in an incorrect manner, all of these things. Hair color and bleach. Hair color, bleach, pulling your hair back, where you sit and where your hair is in relation to the chair behind you, uh, where you're wearing your purse strap. All of these things have a massive impact on hair health and they can actually be quite damaging. It's it, it's almost a bit like trying to lose weight, right? You're like, oh, I'm trying to really, I'm struggling with my weight. So what I'm going to do is I'm exercise. I need to focus on exercise. I need to just, you know, if I can just exercise, I'm going to lose. But you're not paying attention to nutrition or even if you're eating well and if you're eating well, how much of that good food are you eating? Or you're maybe you're perimenopausal or menopausal and you're going through all these hormone shifts, or maybe you're highly stressed. All of those things have a massive impact on your weight, the same way that all of these other influences have a massive impact on your hair, not just heat. So not to say that heat tools can't be damaging, just to say that pay attention to other things too, because they're just as important. All right, we're going to scroll through and get to some of these questions here, because I know you guys have some burning questions you want to answer. Um, Diana is going to be my... Uh, my help to try to figure these questions out. So I'm going to, yeah. okay. So Diana, can you go ahead and find a, um, let's see. Uh, everybody saying hello. Hello, hello, hello. Um, oh, um, yeah. Studies found that, uh, here we got a yeah. good one right yeah. here. Let's pull this up. All righty. So studies found that dying hair is damaging to the drying. Hair. Drying hair is damaging. So here's an interesting thing, Stephanie. I a hundred percent, I, and I still, I think I still believe this, that obviously drying hair is damaging the hair. Hair drying. <laughs> oh, I just thought you, drying. I was you, like. You did a video on that. Actually. Yeah, yeah. No, no, yeah. no. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, Stephanie. That's, you, 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 don't, you jumped <laughs> That's into my That's why point. I'm reading and you're answering. I, exactly. <laughs> I just saw that drying hair is like, yeah, it is. But actually, like you said, air drying has actually been found to be almost more damaging. Yeah. Um, All right. We got another one. Let's see. It's from so, Eloise. Eloise says, I have a square jaw. How long should I let my hair grow below my jaw? I'm a senior, senior citizen female. Thanks. Um, so if you feel like you have a square jaw, then you're dealing with a strong jaw line. And we want to offset that and add a little bit of length. Usually square faces also kind of fall into the round, into the realm or can fall into the realm of a more wide face. So not just like a, a little bit of on the fuller side. So if you're trying to offset that, it's not that it has to be a lot longer than the jaw. You'd be surprised. Actually, just a little bit can go a long way. But you just want to keep it. I mean, it kind of depends person to person. But let's say an inch or a couple inches below if it's face framing. Or you could actually go above that too. So you're really just trying to stay away from having something that lands directly at your chin. That's kind of the, the bigger thing. So even if you have your length a little bit longer, but you have face framing layers that sit right at the chin, it's going to basically do the same thing that you're not wanting to do. Um, really, what am I missing? 
sorry, I'm, I'm like, I've got my glasses on so I can see the questions that are coming up. Maybe you, need to, maybe you need to take your glasses off. You're going to be distracting. <laughs> um, so really, yeah, a couple inches below the chin, if, if you're talking about length, but just also really make sure that what's going on right around your face, that's what you want to pay attention to. That needs to be either a little bit longer, maybe a couple inches or shorter than the chin. But I've got a hair right here, but it uh, goes person to person a little bit. All right. So I'm actually going to um, ask a question from the Instagram community. Um, what do you got? Uh, who's the fun one in your relationship? So keep in mind, folks, you can ask us anything. Yes. I'm here to talk about hair because that's what I know. She's here to make fun of me because no, that's what she knows. Food. Fair point. She's just here for the food. <laughs> so who's the fun one in our relationship? Me. Absolutely. 100% without a doubt. <laughs> I think it depends on what you think of what you consider to be fun. Anything that's actually fun. <laughs> Me. Fair. I'm probably the more um, risk adverse. Yeah. Um, what, what we I'm going? more silly and goofy and you're definitely more like put together and like, like if I love the lives because I can just be all whatever, whatever. But like, if I have to be in front of a, um, his camera for like one of his videos, I literally hyperventilate. I'm like, you know, doing some usas, trying to like calm myself down because I, he's just definitely got it down the professional stuff. But but I think you do I'm really not. well though. Like I think you like once you calm down a little bit, I think yeah. you do. You know, yeah. it just takes you a second. You know, but I, I do know on our other channel that we do more like travel stuff that we're starting to kind of get into. Um, it's it's actually funny because I'm like, okay, I can't tell her the questions I'm going to ask her or tell her anything well. I'm going to do. Yeah, because she'll be like what do we do today? I'm like, no, 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 no. It's, 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 it's what are going to do today. I'm a bad actress. So it's yeah. like, yeah. So no, I love it. Either way. So what else we got? I'm for, the funner one. For questions. Let's Wait. scroll through here. Make sure we don't miss any. Yeah. Um, let's see. I, I did see a funny one. Um, uh, Mr. Bean, Mr. Bean Bean. Where is oh, there is right there. All right. Let's do this on here. I don't know why it's not there. Okay. Well, the question is, do you put ketchup on steak? What kind of horrible person puts ketchup? <laughs> no, you do not put ketchup on steak. No. Growing up, I I was obsessed with A1, like A1 steak sauce. Oh, that oh, my mouth just waters thinking about it. Because but, if the steak isn't cooked well, that's true. then you're that's gonna want to bury it. Know, we have the cheap cuts of steak, but since I've gotten older and I know that there's different cuts of steak that like I don't put anything on it. Because if it's a good well-cooked steak, just some seasoning and that's it. I'll tell you what, I had this turn into a steak channel all of a sudden, <laughs> but I'll tell you what, it's different salts. I will take yeah. a plank steak, throw it on the grill. And all I'm doing is putting olive oil and a little bit of a smoked salt or just find some artisan salt. Oh, it's a total game changer. It's really good. Absolutely amazing. Really okay. Good. But yes, no, no, no ketchup on steaks. Can't just can't do it. Okay. Okay. I got to take that one. Okay. Oh, sorry. Um, <laughs> so we're fighting over the mouse. We've got a couple mm. different mouses and um uh da, 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 da. oh I don't know where is it? There it is. Um this is from Brenda. Examples of shampoo and conditioner you recommend. There is this is so this is actually why I don't talk a lot about this on my channel because there are so many different shampoos and conditioners out there. They call them wet lines. There's so many wet lines out there, product lines. There's no way I could know all of them. There are a handful that I've used in the past that I like. Hair Story is one of them. Um, I'm a big fan, only be, mainly, not only, but mainly because they were actually shot, uh, a group of people that came off of a company called Bumble and Bumble, and Bumble and Bumble was out of New York. They had a really good line. Um, and so I, I trust the, the Bumble Bumble line simply because it was built by actual stylists, like people behind the chair that legitimately knew what hair needed, not like some that are just kind of built by brands that just want to put a, some, a product out just to sell a product. Uh, Bumble Bumble got sold. This company came off. They got a really solid product, but it's only, it's a shampoo and conditioner mixed into one, which not everybody's going to go for. And I'm not a fan of any of the other ones I've seen except for this one, but it also doesn't set up at all. And some people need their hair to set up. It's like shampooing with a conditioner. Yeah. Yeah. She's like that. I need the bubbles. So some folks might not (laughs) like it. I had our own line forever um, that had some great shampoos and conditioners, but we had problems with the fulfillment and there's a whole other thing. So I kind of stepped away from that to regroup on that. Um, But there's, there's just so many, it's it's really hard to say. So where I would point you to is the Blowout Professor has a really good channel, if you're not familiar with him. Um, he's got a really good channel. It's all about products and, and he's a blow dry specialist. So he has a salon that's, that all they do is blow dry hair, right? They're just a style blowout. salon. Yeah, so hence the Blowout Professor probably. Um, <laughs> so they use different products 
all the time, constantly. Whereas most stylists, we kind of get into like a groove of products that we really like and we just dial in on those because don't fix it if it's not broken. So we're kind of on that on that line. Hair Story is great. Uh, Tony and Guy has some solid products. Bumble Mumble has some solid products. But even if you find the right brand, if you don't find the right shampoo and conditioner for your specific hair, mm -hmm. you still are kind of could be doing yourself a misservice. So make sure you find the right shampoo and conditioner for your hair, not just what you need. You might need volume. That doesn't mean your hair needs a product or shampoo to create volume. So kind of keep that in mind. I don't know if that helped at all. Cool. See. Um, the next question is, any hair trends you wish would come back? Oh, the mullet. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I kind of see versions of that right now. It's more of the shaggy that kind of give that vibe without it being so. So it's it's called the wolf cut. The wolf, wolf cut. cut basically now is a very similar kind of mulletish kind of trend. Um, there. So to be completely honest, I'm not a huge fan of trends. All right. Like I, I like them, but I'm more of a fan of the long lasting trends. So for instance, like trends or styles of a bob shape, bobs will always be around. I talk a lot of my, about a lot. I talk about them a lot on my channel and I talk about them because there's always a, a form of a bob that will be in style because they're just a timeless shape. They're very strong, long layered shapes are very strong. Here's the, here's my, here's my gripe about trends in general trends for the most part are basically just revamps of another trend with another name. So the wolf cut is essentially a modified mullet. Like at the end of the day, the butterfly cut, that's just long layers parted down the center. Like there's really not a big difference between old trends and new trends. They just call them a different name. And then all of a sudden it's like, oh, look at this new thing that I started. You're like, yeah, but you didn't. Like, it's just a revamp on. I told him he should like create like a style that, you know, already exists because every style pretty much already exists, but then just call it the Justin, right? So 2024, oh, the wow. Justin is all the rage. And it's just like my hair with maybe some fringe in the front. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, so, so to me, it's less about trends. And this is why I always talk about accentuating certain things about your face shape or working with styles that accentuate your face shape. Because to me, it's much more important that you work with your hair and that you work with your face shape. And then you come up with something that's accentuating the things that you love about yourself. Instead of just wearing a trend to wear a trend, mm -hmm. that's where I get kind of like stuck on it. I'm just, I don't know. I've never been that particular stylist. I think too, the thing about trends is people see a trend, but they forget the maintenance involved with said trend. Like you, it's not like I used to go to the hairstylist before I met you. And I thought that, oh, if I just, you know, get this cut, I could just wash and my hair would automatically look like that. Forgetting that I need styling products. I need styling tools. And there's a, you know, time that it takes to create that style. Or the fact that there's maybe, you know, it doesn't work for your hair texture. Mm -hmm. And then a lot of stylists, unfortunately, if they're not really confident, they might not tell you that this isn't going to work for your texture or be able to understand why it wouldn't work for your texture. And, you know, like that's another hair mistake that we see all the time is style uh, is not your fault as a client, but it's actually as a stylist, stylists that are un or not confident enough to tell the client, hey, I know that you say you want, for instance, your hair to be shorter on top of these layers because you want more volume. But in reality, that's not why you're not getting volume. And we actually, in theory, it makes sense. But in reality, that's not how it works. We actually will create more of a problem by doing that. What we need to do is bring this length up or do these other things to help you create that volume or understand that that volume is just not going to be there if we don't go another way. We're going to cause more problems than good out of this. Mm -hmm. So yeah, trends can go bad. All right. Stop touching my mouse. <laughs> okay. So style for a 60 year old with very thinning hair and a, um, autoimmune disease. Okay, Susan. So it's tough to say, honestly, without seeing you, because there's a lot of styles. Here's what I will say about thinning hair in general. And a lot of people are not going to like to hear this because I have a, a, an audience that has, I think some of us have longer hair and we think I that do. every stylist tend to want to just cut your hair off. It's not true. Okay. I don't want to just cut your hair off. But what I can say about anytime hair is thinning, is if we want it to look denser, they're more often than not, the shorter you take it within reason, right? When it gets to like shorter than mine, you're going to see the scalp through it. It's not going to look thicker, but the shorter you take it, the denser it's going to look. So to me, it's more important that we ask the question, are you more comfortable with the length and having it feel a little bit thinner? Or would you rather have it feel denser and be okay with going a little bit shorter? If you're comfortable with it going shorter, then I would probably take it. I would have to look at your hair, but I would take it as short as I could get it that you would feel comfortable with to me to be able to get that shorter. But usually what happens to give you perspective is like this, your hair, when it's straight and long or longer, 
it does this, right? It kind of splits off. But then when you go shorter, it gets a little bit more movement, a little bit more texture. All of a sudden, then it starts to do this. And then those hairs kind of start meshing over themselves. Now it's looking thicker. Now, another way you can look at thickness or trying to add the illusion of thickness or density is if you're feeling like it's at the scalp, which may be if you have an autoimmune, autoimmune disease, um, if it's more the scalp that you're seeing through color going darker with just even the, even just like a, a shade darker than the color that's on the mid shaft in the ends. A lot of times that stepping into color, but that can actually add a little bit of density at the roots. Another thing would be hair fibers, right? Hair fibers just at the roots. It basically just, I'm, I'm literally using them right now. I have hair fibers in my hair and you can't really see it, but like right around in here, I'm going a little bit thinner and I spray them in. You, it just makes it look a lot thicker at the scalp. So it makes a huge difference. That might be the direction you can head as well. So there's a few different options, but there's not one right length. It kind of depends. Okay. This is from Sarah. Hello from New York. Hello hey. Sarah from New York. How do you feel about keratin with formaldehyde? Hmm. Uh, <laughs> as far as I understand. So back in the day, the straightening systems and everything that we started using at the very beginning had formaldehyde in it. And nobody, I, I don't know if nobody knew it or I didn't know it. Right. So I started using them. Then we found out that you basically to have it be even legal in some places, you had to have like, si like serious ventilation systems installed mm -hmm. in the salons to be able to pull that out. On a person-to-person -person basis, and now don't quote me here, okay? I'm sure there's studies that will tell you this. On a person-to-person -person basis, you having it done on your hair once every eight weeks, couple months, you know, few months, whatever it is, probably isn't terrible. For the amount of time that you're exposed, probably isn't a massive problem. I don't know, though. I am not a doctor. I'm not giving you medical advice. <laughs> but, but as a stylist perspective, doing that over and over all day long, you're actually a lot more exposed to that from my than than most folks. Personally, I'm not a huge fan either way. I just don't really want to be exposed. Um, but I would, you know, take it at your own risk. They do lay the hair very flat and very straight. Um, but yeah, it's a matter of payoff, I guess. All right. Um, this one I was laughing at earlier. I, know. Um, I can't. I want a hairdresser as a significant other. You are so lucky, Deanna. <laughs> No, I am not. <laughs> so little, I always joke. So when we first met, he used to do my hair all the time, right? But then, you know, of course, when it's new, it's exciting. And, oh, I would love to do your hair and, you know, all this stuff. You know, and then you get married and he's like, oh, you have so much hair. Oh, my gosh. Do I have to color your hair again? So I said, you know what? I'm going to feel pampered. I want this to be <laughs> me time and self-care. I'm firing you as my hairstylist. And I actually get my hair colored by, well, I was getting my hair colored by somebody else for five or six years. <laughs> okay, so hold on though. Also, she wants a very specific type of color that I just don't enjoy doing, right? Like it's just tedious. And on top of that, <laughs> she's excessively picky. picky. Yeah, not a little bit. So she wants something hyper specific. <laughs> and if it's, and, I, and I'll look and I go, yeah, you're going to get breakage if you do that. Like th this is just how that's going to go. You're not going to, but I also know that if it breaks, then I'm never going to hear the end of it. So to me, I'm like, you know what? Cut my losses. You can go ahead and have somebody else get yourself yeah. pampered, have a good time. But also it's a little bit like the, you know, the mechanic you never want to see is the one that never has any broken cars around. <laughs> like they've got all the time in the world to fix their own cars because they're not working on anybody else. Yeah. That's, you, yeah. So with that said, since we're in a new place, we're about three hours away from my hairstylist was, so I told him, I'm like, my my blonde's kind of growing out. I need somebody to kind of touch it up. And um, he requires, requires, that sounds bad because I can go wherever I want. Um, but he's like, I don't want anybody else cutting your hair. So I do get my hair cut by him. However, I only get my hair cut when he needs me as a model for one of these videos. <laughs> so maybe true. about twice a year I get a this haircut. Is this, is, this is true. <laughs> <laughs> this is true. <laughs> you but, can't say anything else. <laughs> <laughs> no, like here's the deal though. And this is going to sound really bad and it's not meant to. However, I, I, nine out of 10 times, if you call my salon and you say, I'm having problems with my hair, I don't have to see you. You can be on this call right now listening to us. And if you're having issues with your hair, I almost guarantee you it's one of two reasons. It's overlayered at the bottom or the top layers are too short or a combination of both happens all the time. And the reason it happens is because the sectioning pattern that stylists are taught in school to actually layer hair. If you don't know how to kind of not do it or do it a different way, you are going to inevitably over layer the bottom. And if you don't know how to cut, keep from taking the top layers too short, you're going to cut them too short. It's just all there is to it. So I know 
She's got long hair. If she goes in and has somebody layer it, there's a 90% chance they're going to overlay the bottom. And, and I was like, don't do that because it's a, it's a hard one to fix. You got to take length off. It takes a while. And people are going to think I did it and I didn't do it. She wouldn't did it one time without telling me. And, wh and what happened? It, it, exactly what you said. And did, did you like it? No, I didn't. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> So I'm like, look, just let me do that. The one, keep, you were you the, right. the one time you were right. <laughs> it was probably only once. <laughs> but but it is a thing. I'm actually talking about that in an upcoming video. Um, yes. So uh, next week or the week after next, you'll see that. Yeah. All right. So this is a great one. And I know you get this question a lot. Um, so uh, I want to grow out my pixie. How, what are some steps to grow out a bad pixie cut? Okay, I thought I found a great hairdresser to go short, chop my hair. I want to grow it out. Especially around the sides. Okay. Uh, or sides. So it depends on how long you're trying to grow it out. And it depends on how short it is or what's going on. But the basic method is that we try to keep the sides short and let the top start to get longer to begin with. Okay, so step one is start allowing some length to get to the top. And you just keep the side because what's going to happen is usually on a picky, I mean, on a picky. <laughs> <laughs> that should be your new, your new, your new haircut. A picky cut. <laughs> <laughs> no, usually on a pixie, if it's gone kind of wrong, it's usually because it's out of balance. So yes, it might be too short and kind of chopped and feel kind of awkward, but really like internally, what's kind of happening is the, again, it's kind of the top is too short for the side. So if, I, and I almost guarantee if you pull it out like this, from the sides, it's probably either up and down, straight up and down. It's not tapered in. It's either like this or it's like this, mm -hmm. right? Is more than likely what's going to happen. And it's just going to kind of messy and it doesn't have a shape and you kind of understand. So usually what you're trying to do is what's going to grow out first on a pixie or feel like it's grown out is the sides. They're going to feel really bushy and full. It's going to make the top feel really flat. It's not going to give you the shape you're looking for. It's going to be kind of frustrating. If we can get a little bit more length on the top, we usually take the side short and let the top get some length, take the side short. So it doesn't feel like it's quite as frustrating while it's growing. Once the top gets long enough that you can start growing those sides out, maybe around the top of the ear-ish when you comb it down, then we start getting those sides a little longer and we try to get you into like a bob shape. I'm trying to get you into a strong line down here because bobs grow out really easily from here all the way down to like your collarbone. They're basically a bob shape. Whether you like them or don't like them, they're at least at minimum, they don't change form a whole lot. So you can get kind of comfortable with the flow and it feels like you're in a hairstyle. Then once we get that length about the collarbone, then we start layering it up and we start looking at, okay, we're, you know, how short are those top layers? Are they short enough that we can take them? Are they long enough? We can take them a little bit shorter. We kind of go from there. So first thing first, get that top or get those sides a little bit shorter, let that top get long, and then try to get yourself into like some sort of stronger bobbish shape, even if it's a little bit thin on the sides and you just kind of bring it back off your face and let the back be kind of a bob. But yeah, that's, that's kind of process. Unfortunately, there's no like fast mode to it. Uh, stimulate your, your scalp in the shower, right? Rub your scalp, stimulate blood circulation that can help kind of hair growth um, in terms of speed, uh, um, collagen, peptides, stuff like that. I noticed they really helped to kind of get mm -hmm. my fingers growing and hair growing. So your fingers, uh, your fingers, your fingernails <laughs> going, going, so that, that kind of stuff. <laughs> You're funny. Uh, okay. Oh, there we go. Our bangs in. Don's as asking. Don, one hundred percent. Yeah. You think so? Yeah. I think bangs right now. I think forms of bangs are in right yeah, now. Yeah, forms of bangs because so, there's different bangs. There's yeah. these bangs. There's these bangs. There's these yeah. Bangs. And and so here's the thing: bangs are never going to be out. So that's another timeless thing. It's kind of like a bob. There will always be some sort of bang that's in. It'll just be called something. It'll be called like you know, the, the butterfly cut yeah. or something like that. Right. Or curtain bangs, which basically it's is the same it. thing. <laughs> and it's okay? layers. Right? Yeah. It's, it's so it's not necessarily bangs going in in a style. It's essentially the way they're styled. It's going in and out, but most importantly, and this gets back to the trend thing, bangs will always be in. If they accentuate the things you want to accentuate about your face, you want to bring out your eyes. You've got a, you're like me, you've got a six head, right? <laughs> I like to wear bangs. I would. I look like a little bit of dumb and dumber when I do it, but right. But if, if you want to accentuate your eyes or you feel like you got a larger forehead or you want to even accentuate your cheekbones, you can tag, bring those bangs from being square into a little bit more like this. If you're trying to elongate or sorry, uh, take some elongation out of your face, bangs are good. So if they compliment you, they will always be in because you will always look good in them. If they don't compliment you, then you're running the risk because then you're just doing it as a trend. And it's not that it couldn't look good. It just might not be. And then you want to make sure that you are the right trend. And yeah, there's a whole host of other scenarios that get involved.
All right. So the next question, I feel like I know how you're going to answer this. What is the gentlest way to highlight or bleach fine, thin 60 year old natural dishwater blonde hair? Can I, can I answer it how I think you're going to answer it? Answer. I think you're going to say, don't do bleach. Instead, use a high lift tint. Basically. Uh, yeah. That, that's, <laughs> that's, that's what basically. we're going to start doing on my hair. There's a lot of non-ammonia bleaches. There's a lot of, uh, um, like she spoke about high lift tints. It depends on how light you're trying to go. But if you're already on the lighter side, Depending, again, on how light you want to take it, you can get away with some stuff that's really like L'Oreal has a, has a um, product called Maju Mesh, which is one of my favorites. It comes out a beautiful color. It's very easy on the hair. And, you know, like it, I, if you were my client, that's probably the direction that I would go. But again, this is a scenario where you want to pay attention to the color, but we also want to pay attention to the other things that you're doing to your hair, because there might be something in there that if you just, you know, if you modify that, the way you're blow drying your hair and where you're directing heat, for instance, something like that, not that you're doing it wrong. I'm just using it as an example. Maybe you're, you know, directing that heat directly at your hair, right? So maybe if you've got your hair in a, in a round brush, right? Maybe you're directing the heat directly at it versus down the shaft, right? If you're directing it directly at it, that's a lot more damage. I'm more worried about you doing this than using the wrong color because that will damage your hair immediately for your hair. If it's not colored and you're already dishwater blonde and you're going up a couple of shades, it's not going to be as dramatic as if you're black and colored and trying to get it all the way up to white, that's going to be a much harsher product. that's going to achieve that. That's a lot more damaging, but in your case, a lot of things can damage it. So Maji Mesh is a good one. All right. Mr. Bean Bean is now my new best friend because I'm standing and they love my glasses. So, you just brought up a comment, <laughs> not even a question, because they complimented you. <laughs> well, I mean, this is your channel. I used to love, too. So. <laughs> well, <laughs> I was taking like, advantage of it. It's like, by the way, I'm pretty. <laughs> no, I, I just wanted it to I, acknowledge. I agree. Mr. I, I, I agree. Okay. And I love pizza. I love tonight's pizza night up top. Up top. Every Sunday night for the past, what, six, seven, nine years? Oh, it's like years 10 years, literally. Is pizza night every yeah. single Sunday. Um, what do we got? Let's see. Best hair I for coverage for hair that is partially gray, middle age female. Sometimes use demi, sometimes demi ion brand for dark brown. Mm -hmm. Um, so are you talking if you're if you're talking about the the best brand? I don't really think it's a brand that's the best to be completely honest. Uh, if you're talking about the actual dye itself, it depends on how good you're getting coverage right now. So mm -hmm. if you're already getting full coverage and it's not and it's lasting then I would stay where you're at. If you're not getting full coverage, then if you're staying within semi, -demi, semi and demi permanents, then you might need to move to permanent. You might need, need to move to a heavily pigmented permanent. Um, you might need to just change the developer that you're using right now to get more coverage. So yeah, it's, it's tough to say. Um, and there isn't really, there isn't one brand that's best. There's a lot of, you know, L'Oreal is, is strong. Um, I like, that I mean, one, but yeah, I mean, yeah, Red King, I believe, is L'Oreal. Well, it's a parent subsidiary. Yeah, yeah. But, sorry, L'Oreal as a company and their parent, their subsidiary brands are are so, are strong. But then Wella is is good too. So mm -hmm. yeah, there's a lot of them, honestly. Let me go scoot scoot down. Um, oh, where did it just go? Sorry. Um, there we go. This is from this is from our East Coast mom, What's Linda. Up, Linda. Do you believe hair growth serums work for growing new hair? It depends on the serum you're talking about. So serums as a whole, um, the word serum is kind of a, not a trigger, but it's a red flag for me because I always feel like people are just trying to sell you something. So hair growth, if you're trying to get hair to grow quicker, it's a different game than if you're trying to get hair to regrow. So I'm trying to get hair to regrow right now. So I'm using a Rogaine style product, right? Because I need something that's actually going to regrow the hair that has fallen out. But if that's not your thing, and if, and if that's what you're, if that's what somebody was dealing with, then that's where they need to go. They need to go to like uh, something like a Rogaine that's minoxidil. actually, yeah, minoxidil type product or minoxidil, a product with minoxidil in it. Um, and that's really where you're going to see the impact. And a lot of this, you know, like if you're going through menopause or premenopause, pre perimenopausal right now, that might be a factor for you. And that's definitely something you should look into. Dr. Mary Claire Haver is a great asset um, mm -hmm. for all information around that. Uh, but if you're talking about just trying to grow your hair faster, then again, collagen peptides to me and like simple stop skim, scalp stimulation, those are both strong. Any serum beyond that, I just haven't seen anything that's like, yeah, this works 100% of the time. Um, there are products like Nioxin, but they're more for regrowth hair, not hair speed. Mm -hmm. 
so yeah, there are, there are options, but yeah, yeah I'm, I'm I mean, not a fan of One serums, thing you know. is um, he gets hit up by brands all the time for Ugh. hair growth serums and pills and stuff like that. And there's a lot that we say no to. There has been one that we tried and you actually tried it for like a good solid three months that actually worked. And so you partnered did, with yeah. them, yep. but there's so many things out there that, you know, are kind of, uh, that we just have to say no to because it's like, it doesn't make sense yeah. um, or it's something that we have to try for, you know, a, a handful of months before we can actually verify if, if it's uh, effective or not. It's the same reason you'll, re you'll probably never see me talk about shampoos and conditioners by a brand deal on my, on my channel because they take so long to verify. Like for me to really understand if I like them or if they function or how bad they are, or how great they are, it takes months to really get a good feed on that. And I'm just like, sorry guys, you know, if, if I can't see a quick result, then I can't tell an audience about it because I don't, <laughs> it was like I could only do one every five months or something. So, mm -hmm. um, sorry, I'm okay. Option on the Dyson Air Wrap or opinion on the D Dyson Air Wrap system. So, if I'm totally honest, I haven't had a lot of experience with the actual Air Wrap. Um, I've used it a couple of times, and I think it's I think it's promising. So here's my here's my thing with Dyson. Dyson makes really solid products. Yeah, okay? and I don't ever want to come off like I'm talking bad about Dyson. Their blow dryer, I have all, I think, except for the air wrap, I've got a couple of their blow dryers that I don't even use. I've got their air, um, uh, the new flat iron. I can't even think the of the name flat, of it. The, yeah, oh my it gosh. Blows, yeah. yeah. So I've got the, the newest one. It's in the van right now. Um, and to be honest, the products are really well built. They're highly engineered and they have a lot of technology and a lot of forethought. I really appreciate that about the company. I think some of the things are a little bit just like, you're just charging a lot for the name. And it's kind of like, yeah, great. It might work, but who needs it? Like it really, it's not necessary. Um, the wrap, I think in, in the realm of hot air brushes and stuff like that, I think it's, it would be amazing. I just think there's other products out there as well that are not as expensive that can also do just as good of a job. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's a bit like the, the blow dryer. I mean, the uh, vacuums there. I love their vacuums. Yeah. They're amazing and they're heavily engineered. Do you have dogs? Yeah. But there's like <laughs> the shark also works really well yeah. mm -hmm. and it's not as, you know, so it, yeah, I don't want to say they're bad. They're not they're, It's a great product. I think it just matters of, you know, if you want to spend the money on it and could you find something else that works close to enough, close to good enough that yeah, that, the, yeah. the balance and excess and cost is kind of, eh. um, uh, so sorry. Sorry. This is my first time doing this. So you can click on that. Yeah. Linda, you're, you're too. So Linda said a, a, Linda said a, 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 a super oh my gosh, a super sticker. I can't even speak right now. Yeah, I don't you're know. way too nice. Linda. Thank you Thank so much. Thank you so much. Um, let's see. Da, 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 da. Sorry. It's still kind of far away. Okay. <laughs> uh, what is the best hair dryer, hair dye for middle? See, I can't read it. For middle age. Female oh, I feel like we already man. answered that. Yeah. I think we already did. Sorry. Um, Okay. Um, let's see. Me to condition your hair mm. with coconut oil. Do you recommend that? No, <laughs> it's not that you can't, you can, but I think there's just a lot of other products out there that are, that are stronger. I've heard that it's, it's drying. It can be drying or, or it needs to be mixed with something else that it's not like a standalone. I don't I know. Haven't, I haven't heard that. that. We should, we should, I we should would do yeah. an experiment. Yeah, I should. I, I feel like I want to do more research into that um, before I really give you the solid feedback on it. Uh, yeah. 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 I don't know. I'm sorry. I don't want to answer that hundred percent. So ignore, ignore me completely. Let me look a little bit deeper into that first. Okay. I don't want to tell you something and then be wrong and have you um, believe me. And I'm just filling you full of a bunch of nonsense. Sorry. Um, I added high. I'm going to read it over here because I don't know if it's all popping up. I added highlights and need to tone some of the front pieces that didn't fully develop. Um, what's the best way to tone and add it a little bit of ash blonde without making everything darker and fill it all? Uh, so if it depends if you need to tone it. If it didn't come up enough, it might not be able to be toned to an ash color. So usually what ends up happening is color will go through, especially if you're trying to get to light, you're going from dark to light. So you're going through all of the, let's say for instance, black, light brown or dark brown, medium brown, light brown, all the way through the oranges. And then you get up into kind of pale yellows and then, you know, blondes and then whites, right? So if you're stopped, let's say down here in, in a, in an orange, and you're trying to get up to pale white, you have to lift that up to pale white. 
you can't tone that up to pale white. What you're doing when you're toning is just kind of canceling out some of the overall tone to it, right? Some of the overall orange, but it's got to be light enough to actually be toned to the color that you're heading to. So that would be my first thing is to make sure that you're close enough to where you want to be that you can actually use a toner. If you're going to use a toner at that point, then Shades EQ is an incredible line. You can actually get it on Amazon. Um, but as far as the specific formulation that you would want, of you know, because it's, it's not just a, I don't know if you're familiar with Shades EQ, but it's kind of like a color in a way. Um, you apply it kind of similarly. We usually apply it at the shampoo bowl mm -hmm. at the salon. With wet hair. We, yeah. And you rub it in and you really watch it. Like you watch it. Like there's been times where you can put it on somebody's hair and when it's wet, right, you rinse their hair down, you put this in and I'm literally standing over the bowl like this and within 15, 20 seconds, boom, it's the color I needed to go and I'm rinsing it out ASAP because yes. it'll go, I mean, it just goes from here to here and you're, if you're trying to stop it like right here, I mean, it's a matter of seconds before it ends up there. It's so fast. So not always does that work like that, but point being is it's an, it really is an incredible line. I'm a huge fan of it. You can find it on Amazon, but uh, it's usually a mixture of a few different things to kind of create the exact color you're looking for. You may be able to find formulas online as well. Uh, like we have formula cards that they, that we get with shades EQ because we're buying it as, you know, as a salon. So we get these cards that say like, Hey, if you want this kind of color, right, then here's the formula for it. And it tells you like mix these three things. So you might be able to find that stuff and then find the color that you're looking for, but you need to be close enough to that color first, or it's not going to do anything for you. Mm -hmm. All right. So this is a really good question. Uh, Justin, you're a professional. <laughs> That's up for debate uh, and use really good tools for those of us on a lower budget suggestions for mm -hmm. tools and IE flat irons and brushes that you, okay. Depends on what the budget is, but I will say if you're looking at flat irons, the Unil Infrashine, now it's just called Infrashine, Infrashine ceramic iron, you can usually get them for like a hundred bucks. Now that might be above budget, but if you can save up and get that one, that is... I've had mine for probably about eight or nine years. Yeah. Probably. The thing, I mean, yeah. it's to this day, legitimately one of... So it's kind of the comparison iron that I compare all other tools to. So even though I have the Dyson flat iron, right? Now you're looking at a $500 iron versus this $100 iron. And I'll tell you right now, the Dyson has a couple of things, cordless mainly, that I like about it. And, you know, the flex. But at the end of the day, like if I'm going straight to flat iron her hair or something or and, curling it yeah or curling it and i need to go between one of the two pretty much probably the only benefit to me grabbing the dyson is the fact that it's cordless mm -hmm. otherwise i will just as easily grab the unil i am totally or the infrashine i'm 100 fine either way and we'll put the link in the description yeah um so you can find that um i would They're also awesome. say uh we need to do more things on airbrushes. I yeah. Do you guys, if you want to see more content, like on, or if you're curious about content on airbrushes, actually, I've got a question for you, if I can ask. Uh, we're about to film, we're kind of stepping into a new series. And we're really curious about doing this. We want to go to like, say, Target or Ulta or one of these type stores and buy like the five most popular blow dryers or the five most popular whatever. And then use them and compare them and see how they work. Maybe the five cheapest or maybe the cheapest to the most expensive, right? Is that some content that you guys would be interested in, in us creating? I think it'd be fun. I think you could get some value out of it, but I'd love to hear what your guys thought is on it. Okay. Mary asks, how do you feel about plant-based products such as Aveda? <laughs> okay, I've so, got my own opinion, which I'm not an expert, but I have my own opinions on. What is it? I think sometimes like it's, and not, and not saying that I know I'm not a scientist or a chemist or anything like that, but I think sometimes when people use words like plant-based, all natural, you know, all these things, it's, it's more of a marketing ploy than it is like, Hey, all this stuff is really good for your hair because there's bad things in nature too, that can, you know, deter us and things like that. So I think that sometimes it's more of a, a marketing thing that makes you like, I've been guilty of that, that I've, you know, gone to the store to buy something and it's like, oh, all natural and healthy. And I'm like, mm. and then I'm like, well, that, that, that wasn't good for me to eat either. <laughs> yeah. So, so then, that, and you shared my take on it at, at the end of the day. I don't want to say that all plant-based products are terrible because I'm sure, and I, and I'm not going to pretend like I've tried all of them either. I'm sure there's some out there that, you know, maybe work really well, but as a whole, for so what I've seen so far is that more often than not, it is based more in marketing than it is based in actually, it's almost like, Hey, I can either make this product work really well, or I can make sure that it's all plant-based and push the marketing and just market the heck out of it. Right. And they just lean to this side and it's like, well, yeah. So for instance, speaking to natural, let's just take henna for an example. Okay. You're going to color your hair with natural henna stuff, right? 
you come in the salon, I'm not even, I, I can't touch your hair. I don't know what my product's going to do or how it's going to interact with what's on your hair right now. It could go a total sideways, you know, like it, it can get real crazy. We've actually seen situations. I didn't have this happen to me, but I had a friend of mine that worked for me that then went on and worked in another salon and he was highlighting somebody's hair. He used the same formula that, that they did the last time he's highlighting it. He puts her over. She's got her foils in her hair. And all of a sudden he hears her screaming. He looks over and her hair is literally smoking smoke coming out of the foils and he's like oh my gosh and he ran over threw her hair back rinsed everything out could not figure out why all of a sudden this product that he used legitimately almost caught on fire on this woman's head and they finally figured out that it was i think due to the iron content of some a specific product that she was using that had a chemical reaction with the products that they were using and they use very normal like salon stuff right i think they use the same product that we use in our salon l'oreal it's, it makes me anxious more often than not. So I just think that there's more, and I, think there's, I think it's usually you're just buying the branding. Yeah. And, and a caveat to that, it has nothing to do with hair necessarily, but like the other day I was buying these treats for my dog. Right. And the picture of it has pictures of cod and salmon, and it's talking about how it's good for their skin and coat. And I just happened to look at the back of the package. The first ingredient is chicken. The fourth ingredient is like fish oil. And so it's like, it's all like marketing. So I was like at the front of it, it's just shows all these pictures of salmon and things like that. So I'm thinking, Oh, this is primarily salmon. No, it's, it's majority chicken. And so, I mean, it's just like, I think it's a good rule of thumb just to like question things, right? Like, okay, well it's all natural. Well, can they just put like one plant product in there and then they call it all natural or they call it plant-based or, you know, I think, yeah, it's, I have a product just for us that's, you know, that's uh, hair protectant. It protects against heat. It helps to smooth hair out, helps block moisture against frizz, all that stuff. And one of my biggest concerns is like, I can't have it build up on hair. Like I, as a stylist, I know how, how, you know, how much of a problem buildup is. And so I was like, we got to be really careful with the silicones. Well, people will hear you can't have any silicone in any sort of product because all it does is build up. It's terrible, blah, 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 blah. It's simply not true. There's three different kinds of silicones in ours, but they're very specific ones. And the point of them is to help protect it, but also to be able that when you're drying your hair, that most of it just comes out and the other one's water soluble. So when you rinse your hair out the next day, it's gone. And so like, just because a product might sound bad or an ingredient doesn't always mean the same way that just because an ingredient sounds good, doesn't always mean that it is. Yeah. And I have to show this from happy. Happy is happy because she got a wolf cut in the spring because of your videos and, nice. it. and then it looks like Jenny has one too. Awesome. So, um, that's awesome. I well, love that. First of all, though, happy, thank you for the trust. That's yeah. the bigger thing for me is the fact that you actually watched my videos and you saw or something and you, the fact that you even watched one of my videos, that's thank you for that. And I'm glad <laughs> you love it. a lot. I'm so impressed with you guys. <laughs> <laughs> true, you, I true mean, video, you, video. you put a lot of work into these videos. Like you don't see it behind the scenes. It's like, you know, he, vid he makes the videos and then he like spends like three or four days editing just to get them out. And he's, oh, he's so amazing. I should probably watch him more often. <laughs> <laughs> you have me on live at all times <laughs> that's true um uh da, 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 da. let's see um let's see so Sorry. my my uh joe vickers actually said that she wishes that we were in the uk my brother's in the uk heads up we might be there someday who yeah. knows he's actually in portland now but he lives in right outside of london i guess i can't Swinner, Swinner, Swinnerton or something. Swin something like that. Yeah. I don't remember. Um, all right. Hello from Spain. Hey, Don. Love your videos and miss the views that don't suck. Man. Hey, do you guys see this little uh, icon up in the top you left? you see this? Look. Yeah. Whoops. Hold on. How are everything? Yeah, goes. That view okay. does not suck. Yeah. That's our that's our new logo. Uh, and, and not too long from now, I'm actually going to bring out a video I'm creating. I'm going to create a video that explains the story behind that. It's not as simple as just, hey, look. That view doesn't suck. There's a lot more to it that I've never said it. I've never told anybody. So uh, yeah. we'll we'll be launching some some merch, or whatever, and uh, yeah. and uh, talking all about exactly yeah. what that means. But yeah, uh, we we had. If you don't know a little past about us, we were traveling for the past year, um, and then we finally settled down um, in Central Oregon. And so I think everything with everything, you know, life, there was no, there was no routine, no structure. Um, so we kind of got away from the, the hair, the 
out and about. Yeah. I, yeah. I stopped filming as much outdoors because I was, you know, trying to find easy places inside because we yeah. were just time crunched and everything yeah. going on. I'm like, I just need a, a fast, you know, but I'm actually missing that. So I'm going to get yeah. back outside. Yeah, and get back on that, Cause a lot of people I think are missing that for sure. And so many people are like, why am I watching this? <laughs> why am I watching this? Timber like this it, it like, kind of lumberjack out in the woods talk about hair. I'm like, that's fair. I mean, I would be confused too, but come on. Um, okay, here's a great one. Okay, what do we got? Um, Claire. from Claire. Um, Claire from the UK, my hair gets greasy the day after washing it. What product can you recommend? The if, if it's greasy the day, so there's two things. If it's greasy the day after you wash it, part of it, the question is. Is the shampoo that you're using the day that you wash it getting all of the moisture out? Are you shampooing it? All not, the oil. I mean, sorry, all the oil out. Are you shampooing it correctly? And that that sounds very condescending. Are you shampooing your hair correctly? But I there just is, recently learned how to shampoo my hair correctly. Oh, yeah, honestly. <laughs> uh, I mean, like it is. It's actually like a thing, right? So, um, shampooing your hair correctly really means are you really scrubbing your scalp, getting the shampoo? Because usually, what people do, especially if your hair is longer, they'll kind of get the shampoo through their hair, and they're paying a little less attention to their scalp, which is where the majority of that oil is coming or is actually coming in and where it lives. So really scrubbing at your scalp and getting, making sure even maybe a couple of times, a couple of shampoos every day to get that out in the, in the first place. So that's kind of the beginning. After that, the following day, if you're feeling like you're getting a lot of oil, um, also pay attention to one, how much you're playing with your hair during the day. Okay. So the more you play with your hair, you have hand oil on your hands. So that's going to be working it through the ends. But also if you're playing with your hair, or you're messing a lot. Anytime you stimulate your scalp, you're also stimulating sebaceous glands that are actually secreting more oil. So granted, all of those things are very like fine details, but I am a firm believer in everything that a lot of small things add up. As far as products go, there are a handful of different kinds of uh, um, dry shampoos that can work really well. Uh, Hair Story actually has one called Powder that I'm a big fan of. Deanna found one at like the dollar store or somewhere? No, it's, it's Walmart. Uh, what is it called? It's really, it smells so we'll, good. We'll put a link in the yeah. description when okay, she finds it. Think about it. Um, but that one works well. But usually though, something to soak up that that oil. Batiste. Sorry. Is it B-A or P? B. Okay. B Batiste. I think that's how you say it. I swear I've seen it at Nordstrom Rack. Oh yeah, probably. Okay. It's like everywhere. But yeah. the tropical one smells really good. I like it. Yeah, so stuff like that. I'll share my quick tip on how I wash my hair because I was the same as you that like I used to wash my hair every day and then I could go every other day. But now I'm actually going probably about four or five days. And what I learned is like- Just go through menopause and then all of a sudden you're scared. <laughs> yeah, I, you know, put, put my wrong. shampoo in and then I actually, because I usually feel greasy more in the like the nape of my neck or behind my occipital bone, that little bony bone that sticks out. And so I like separate my hair and I make sure I get all in my skin on my scalp and I literally just scrub my scalp. I don't worry about washing my hair at all. It's mostly I'm scrubbing my scalp, rinse it out, and then I second wash. I do a double wash every <laughs> second. Because the first time it doesn't feel like it suds up and why I need to sud these because my hair's so oily, I think. You just named it. Like you just like you just brought into the world an, an idea that is so new. It is, I second wash. I second wash. <laughs> also <laughs> called a shampoo again. Yeah. It's rinse and repeat, really? I look at the back. I look at the back of the shampoo bottle and give me the instructions on what it's <laughs> But But oh. the, the key is really getting into your scalp and not trying to wash your hair, but wash your scalp and like scrub, 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 and then rinse, repeat, rinse. And then conditioner, I literally just do here down. And the, except for this top piece, I'll try to go because it's more damaged. But I the conditioner's from here to here because if you put your conditioner up there, then it's like kind of putting that, that greasiness back you on. You shampoo your scalp. You condition your hair, yes. mainly your mid shaft to the ends. So shampoo, scrub, rinse, shampoo, scrub, rinse, condition at the ends. There you go. And, and see second, if that helps. And let us know Is that, that like helps. fourth meal? It's like fourth meal. Okay. All right. Taco Bell. Taco Bell. Oh, there you go. That's, right. my, that's my jam. What do we got? All right. So let's go down. Dion is picky. Yes, I am. Yes. <laughs> um, okay. Hey, Tatum. Let's see what, oh. let's see what, let's see what, let's see what our daughter has to say. I colored my hair with black. What? When did you do this? I colored my hair with. <laughs> She's such a stinker. Oh, how do I get to... You're an it. She's asking it to be a smart aleck. Uh, so here's a simple question. She's to answer. Done that before. <laughs> yeah, you don't. Is a... actually no. You go pay someone a ton of money to use a bunch of crazy products, spend yeah. all day in the salon, hope that your hair doesn't fall out. This is my baby girl. My yes. baby girl. I miss you. <laughs> Girl, she comes in and. <laughs> um, let's see what we got here. I have a. Let's see. Okay. I'm going to throw this on here. Sharon asks, I have a slightly larger nose. How can I style? How can styles with accentuate 
how, what styles would accentuate or, or diminish facial features. Um, so if your nose is a little bit, if it's on the longer side, so it, it kind of depends a little bit, not totally, but if it's on the longer side, then we kind of want to work about bringing some of the hair kind of back off of your face. So think that anything that points in is going to point towards. Does that make sense? So if you've got like face framing layers and stuff, right? And they're all going like this and it's closing off and it's drawing all this emphasis into right here. If you've got bangs and they're cupping like this, then it's framing right in here. This is the same reason that bangs accentuate eyes. Okay. So if we want to open you up and kind of take, take volume away or take actually just interest away from the nose, then we want to accentuate other things of the face aside from the nose. For instance, accentuate cheekbone structure because the way we're going to do that is to get it off the face, create volume through here. If we're accentuating this, then we're lifting cheeks. We're drawing eyes to cheeks. That means we're not drawing. If you're drawing eyes to one thing, you're drawing less eyes to the other thing. That you're so smart. Now I, I know. understand why people actually watch your videos. <laughs> wow. So just think about accentuating things that are not your nose and you'll inherently on some levels de-accentuate your nose. Um, let's see. Kate asked how to avoid the pyramid look. My hair is slightly below my shoulders with a slight part with a slight side part and long layering. Okay. So the layering is going to determine a lot of how you get away from that. So usually and this always sounds aggressive. I tell clients this, like, don't stress it, but follow me here. You don't style that out. You cut that out. And the way you cut that out is to basically add layering so that you don't have enough hair at the bottom to get big and create the pyramid. It sounds very dramatic and it's really not that dramatic. I'm just trying to explain it in a very visual format. If you have, let's imagine that your hair is Deanna's length. Okay. Now you've got layers that are, let's say down here. Well, that, even though those layers are shorter than the length, they're still long hair. If we cut your hair one length to here, you're not going to inherently get a ton of volume up in the, up in the temples or the crown area because this is still long to begin with. So we need to pay attention to the length of the hair because that's going to dictate how short you cut the layers in the back at least. So we want to pay attention to that, but we want to try to figure out, okay, well, if we want to pull volume out of here, we need to get more lift up here and we need to take the hair out of here. So if I add more layers up there, take those shorter, there's naturally, they're not going to, there's not going to be as much hair reaching from here down, which means that there's inherently going to be a little bit less volume in there. Cause there's just not that hair there to get volume. Right? So not only are we going to be taking hair out of here, we're going to be adding volume up there because we're creating a little bit lighter hair and then root lift, you know, like gels, mousse product rollers, whatever it takes. Your hair, your hair is all messed up now. That's I like it. You need to you need to style your hair better. Wow. So you can tell me to, you tell me to cut my hair short. <laughs> I didn't I didn't say that. I'm just saying it, it, it could be just that the layers are too long and no, it might need to be too. I long. was just I was making joking like if you watched a video that he did a couple oh, of weeks gosh. ago that was like should women over forty cut their hair short? Question mark. But I think a lot of people thought it said exclamation point because they're like how did you watch the video? And they're just like this guy's an idiot. I'm like after yeah. whatever. Um, but also sorry to, to catch back on that real quick. Uh, you can also take some of that volume out from the front layers. So you take those layers in the front shorter. If you don't want to take the layers in the back shorter, really lighten that up. That's really a good way to get more volume in the front and pull some of that volume out of the sides. Okay. Now, what do we got? Miss Lace. How new is the Bixie? I mentioned it over the last year and get very confused from stylists. Uh, the, the Bixie, I feel like I started seeing it probably mid last year. Uh, maybe a little bit before that, maybe early last year. And uh, yeah, if, if, if you're unfamiliar what a Bixie is. A Bixie is a cross. This is exactly what I was talking about with trends. It's a cross between a Bixie and a, I mean, a Bob and a Pixie. And it's such a, the reason you might be getting confused looks is even if they understand what it is, it is such a massive difference. We are talking a cross between a hair that's my length to hair that could be considered a Bob down a long Bob, a lob, right? Which is just a long Bob, you know, long bob. and everything in between could technically be a Bixie if it's layered a certain way. There's so many variations. So in a situation like that, I always say, never tell your stylist a name of a cut. Don't ever go in saying, I want this. Go in armed with photos, photos of styles that you like and photos of styles that you don't like. If you see a Bixie in a magazine that you think you call it a Bixie and you love it, awesome. Find more styles of that, but find that photo and go, okay, I like this about this photo. I like the length around the face. I like the length on the top. And then find other things that you don't like in other photos. This is too short on the sides. This is too long on the sides. I don't like how this is soft in the back. I want it to be a little stronger in the back. So that you can go in and not just say, give me this, but say, 
here's the kind of direction I want to head. I want to go into a shorter shape. I, this is too short. This is too short. This I like, this is long enough. This is too long over here. I don't like these bangs. And then you guys can kind of work together to piece together the right quote unquote, what you will end up calling a Bixie, but they don't know that it's a Bixie. There you go. That was a long answer. I oh. told you guys I can talk. That was actually one of the shorter ones. You talked way longer. Stop. On the answers. <laughs> Uh, this is a really good one. Um, I love your new spray. Thank you. I just bought my second bottle as a backup. Thank you. The results are amazing. That's such great feedback. Thank yeah. you so much, Sarah, because it's still, you know, relatively new. And so we love the feedback. Yeah. We're still kind of working on all of the things behind the scenes. There's a lot going yeah. on. Um, I have the frizziest hair on the planet. Uh, <laughs> can I mix with other products before I blow dry and flatter? So, so are you talking about if you're asking if you can mix this product with other products? Absolutely. Yeah. So we we formulated just defrizz very much on purpose to be able to mix with anything. I it's important to me that I don't want this to limit your ability to use any of the products that you like. I don't want it to limit it. What I want it to do is accentuate the results that you're going to be able to get from your other products. If you're using a product for volume, so the way you would do this is you would start as a foundation. Think of just defrizz as this is the foundation of your style. And then moving forward, we've got, okay, now that we've got this kind of protective foundation in here, now let's start adding volume. Now let's start creating, you know, like it's not going to really be the frizz control for curly hair, diffuse drying, right? Because hair it's, dry. yeah, it's yeah. on purpose, not built to be that tacky and that strong. More often than not for that type of hair, you need something a little bit more grip to it so that it can really hold those coils together and really combat that frizz. This is, is if it's strong and if it's that strong, then it's going to play completely different with everything else. So to make sure that it still helps to block the moisture, which is causing frizz and to help give it shine, which makes it look less frizzy and help protect against the heat that you're using to combat that frizz, all those things that had to be formulated in a very specific way. And so you can definitely mix this yeah. with any product. That, that was want. actually one of the number one things that he was, he was focusing on because there are other products, product lines that says, do not use with any, any other, you know, products. And we wouldn't want somebody that loves, has a product that they absolutely love and not be able to use it because, you know, so yeah, that agree, was, agreed. That was really good. Go ahead. Go ahead All right. Um, let's see, let's hide this. Um, do, 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 do. Um, I'm sorry. I'm like trying to, what's the best cut for curly hair to camouflage thinning hair at the temple? So again, the shorter you take it, the better it's going to be. Right. So here's the great thing about curly hair. So if you're diffusing it for like big curls, you can get away with a lot more layers than folks with straight hair can because the layering kind of blends in and it's really more of like a cutting a shape into hair, almost even more so than um, the limits of straight hair where you're kind of cut shape into it, but you're also kind of limited by like, hey, if, it, if I don't cut it, if I got the layers too short on top, they're going to not balance. Curly hair, you can get kind of crazy with the, how much you cut the top and it can look really cool. So the first thing I would say is figure out how short you want to take the length and use that as a guide because this is going to determine how short you take the top to some level. So you would want to say, bring that length up. You know, I don't know where your length is right now, but let's imagine that it's somewhere towards the collarbone. Okay. Bring it to the collarbone. You've got a lot of room to play with how short you take those layers on top. You can kind of cut them way too short and it can still look really funky and edgy and fun. If it's a little bit longer, they might need to stay a little bit longer than that on the top to kind of still balance out, even though they're quite a bit shorter than straight hair. But when you take them shorter, it's just going to be a very messy overall feel. And the more we can kind of mess that up so it's not so contrived, maybe not parted, for instance, where it's just kind of a little bit messier, maybe like a cool kind of bang if you're able to rock bangs, you know, um, cool kind of bang. Anytime you can get that messiness, that's where you're going to see the most dense or illusion of density. Also, and again, this is adding into color, so you might not want to move this direction, but dimension and color highlights and lowlights, different tones in there is going to go a long way to camouflaging that stuff too. So if you can add some highlights or lowlights or a combination of the both, that's going to actually help you kind of minimize any of the, any of the thinning as well. All right. This is a great question from Margo. Um, I got long layers or I allowed my stylist to do long layers, but have been trying to grow them out because it was too much. When it's straight, it looks almost like a straight line. Like I have a long bob on top of long hair, which is so funny because I think you're doing a video. I think yeah. your upcoming video is actually on this topic. Yeah. So here, here's, here's what happens. And I, says, what do I tell her? Yeah. Um, <laughs> I, mm. I'm trying to think of how you, how, how you explain this to somebody. So first of all, welcome. If you're just joining us, we're kind of trying to figure out an easy way to explain like 
how do you tell your stylist what to do when they kind of overdid the layers? If you've over already overdone the layers, um, it, oh, I mean, it's it. I don't know an easy way to tell you. It it depends on how it's done. So you've got the top layers that probably what happens is. So it's like it's almost like that mushroom shape that we were talking about in the. Video. Well, no, it's actually it's different. It's more like it's the layer too uh, too long at the, oh. or too much at the bottom. Which says it looks like she's got a long yes bob a long on piece. Top of so if if I hair. combed her hair out straight from her head, right, just like this, and cut like this, right, so it's just flat. Like if you cut it like this. Yeah. Maybe. So if I, I don't yeah. So if That's I took okay. her hair like this, right, and I just cut a line like this down here. So we have what we call a recession line. It goes from here to her occipital bone. All of this hair below here, if I pull that out and cut it straight down like this, that's exactly what's going to happen to you. You're going to end up feeling like you've got this line in your head like a bob, and then all of this stuff down here is going to be overlayered. Now, the problem with that is trying to explain to somebody, hey, I don't want – you basically can say, I don't want anything here below this line. So any of the stuff – you can draw a line from here to there – I don't want anything below that to be layered. I want it to grow out to be all one length. But then you also still have to explain to them how to layer the top because that's where you're going to get your layers from. So unfortunately, like I understand what happened. I don't have an easy way for you to explain to your stylist what happened. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry. I wish I could be more help on that one. I don't know how you tell your stylist to do that though. Um, let's see. Can I have, I have weight. I have weight on, have a bob. Will a fringe make me look round? Oh, so maybe a, a rounder face? Depends on where your length of your bob is. So if your length is longer, so the simple answer, the short answer is more than likely it will. Anytime you add bangs to anything, they're going to add more width because they're broadening cheeks, right? You're closing off part of your face. So the minute you close off part of your face, then you've got less to see. Usually what we want to try to elongate, we want to open that face up a little bit. That's going to help elongate and, and thin things out. So the bangs, if you still want to have bangs, you can always keep them just swipe swept to mm -hmm. one side. That actually, if, especially if they're longer and they cut right at your cheekbone up here, that can do a really good job of actually accentuating cheekbone structure. And because you can still see your forehead through it, then it still has, has a little bit of that elongation. The next thing is where your bob length sets. If your bob length sits at your chin, it's going to add roundness on anybody, on any face. If you feel like your face is long and you want to add fullness, you leave that length right at your chin. If you feel like your face is full, then you want to leave that a little bit longer than your chin. So if you do it longer than your chin and you have a swept off bang, it won't add fullness. But if you have it longer than your chin and you do a square bang or even like a more rounded, but still a full bang, it's inherently going to add some fullness to your face. Mm -hmm. Okay. I know the answer to this one. Does tying up your hair break it? You can. Depends on the on the system or the the size of the thing that you're using to tie it up. So just think that anytime you use a small like a rubber band, the smaller the surface area is on that piece or whatever you're using to pull your hair back and hold it back, the more um, manipulation do you have on your hair on that smaller surface area. So if you have a larger surface area, then it's a larger span that you're putting that pressure against your hair against, and then it's just not going to be as damaging. Mm -hmm. But yes, it can. It doesn't have to be. I know scrunchies aren't the greatest thing in the world. Not everybody loves them. But think something big like that, it's going to be far less damaging to your hair than a tiny little rubber band. Mm -hmm. Finn, yeah. yeah. Or, or how tight you do it. Or if you're like me, you tighten it tight all the time. And every time you do that, it's like, good, 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 good. Yep. why do I have yeah. these new layers that I didn't have before? <laughs> Um, uh, da, 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 I don't know what this says, but we'll read it. Um, JMR, I'm 100% gray with that picky bad cut. Um, I just don't like my grays. Could you suggest any high low lights to blend in and some browns or blondes to add interest? I was brunette. Um, if you don't like your gray, so I'm, I'm confusing if you're asking specific colors or if I could, if I would suggest doing highlights and low lights in general, um, Highlights and lowlights, it's hard to see without your skin tone exactly what color I would recommend because you really need to take into consideration your hair color as well as your skin tone right now and kind of make sure that they all play together. But as far as being 100% gray and and picky, um, if you're trying to cover up grays, then absolutely the highlights oh, and lowlights. She had the, she had the bad pixie cut that you call the picky. <laughs> oh, now I got you. Now I got you. Okay. Now it's all coming together. I was a little confused. Um, yeah, no, absolutely. Like absolutely highlights and lowlights do a great job of hiding gray. Um, and they, in a situation like yours, especially if you've got 
a cut that you're not loving already. And it is a shortcut, right? Shortcuts tend to have more movement anyway, but adding more movement and texture just kind of brings more flair to them. So you might be able to kind of, hey, win. I don't like my cut so much, but I love this high these highlights. This color is beautiful. At least it makes up for it a little bit. Yeah, and if you go to um, one of his videos that he did actually with Glam Girl Gabby and Styles by Summer, um, where it was called The Perfect Bob, that's exactly what he did. He put some, uh, this beautiful woman, 100% gray, and he put some low lights in it right. that were great because they were low maintenance. She didn't have to get them redone if she didn't want to. They would grow out beautifully. So it would probably be a really safe way to start and say, oh, I really like that low light because it might make those grays pop and just feel feel more fun. Here's my one thing about low lights on gray hair, and this goes for anybody, not just pixie cuts. Pixie cuts especially, though. Uh, low lights on gray hair. So you're basically going into black to get the salt and pepper look. Okay. It means you're basically the pepper that you're adding in. It, you can't do like a level six, which is like a brown. Don't do your natural because more often than not, you salt and pepper is not a natural color. It is, but it's not your natural brown color. It's usually looks more kind of like mine actually looks kind of brown in this light, but it's not. Um, it usually looks a little bit more on the black side, right? So you want to air a little bit on the darker side. I actually talk about that in the video that she was just referencing. And then if you're having your stylist add low lights and your hair is 100% gray, make sure that you tell them less is more. I want small pieces and I don't want a lot of them to begin with. You, it's very hard to go back from them. You can always add more in. But I also find that when I'm doing something with so contrasting black against white, if it's a normal size highlight, like you might add blonde in your hair, it looks much more dramatic and it can actually start to look very stripy on hair. So just kind of keep that in mind, but I'm such a fan of, of low lights specifically, um, aside from highlights, just low lights on salt and pepper hair. All right. So this is from Paula. Um, how to help frizz on naturally wavy hair without flattering the crap out of it every time. <laughs> so you're talking about a couple of different things. So on one hand, you're talking about either you're letting it air dry or you're letting it or you're diffuse driving, drying it on some level. Sorry, air. really quick, Paula. I love your, is that a Megadeth shirt? If so, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <sorry>. Um, <laughs> So you're either doing one of the, you know, one of those two things, if you're letting it air dry. So I didn't, and, and I'm not trying to shout out just defers because that really wasn't the point of this. I'm not, I don't push products like that. Um, but I was actually pretty surprised. I used a girl in a video that I did where we straightened her hair and she's got very wavy kind of like curly hair. She's a friend of ours. And we, you know, we got her some just defers just as kind of a thank you for being part of that. Video. No, actually she purchased that. Oh yeah, she did purchase that one. <laughs> We're like, what are you doing? Yeah. Like, stop it. You know? <laughs> um, but so she got that, she used it and she used it. Now I would never tell you to spray this in and let your hair air dry. Cause I just don't believe it wasn't formulated to, again, to be strong enough to really control frizz. She flipped out about it. She sprayed it and let it air dry. She's like, I couldn't believe that it couldn't mm -hmm. come out of frizz. I was like, what? So I have not honestly tested that on people because I didn't formulate it for that. I didn't think to test that, which usually I do, which is kind of funny, but I just, you know, was like, Hey, that's not what this is for. This is a heat protectant. We're using this for this. So that is one option that you can try. Um, but otherwise the biggest thing that you want to pay attention to, regardless of what product you're using is just to know that from the time that your hair is wet, when you have any kind of wave or curl in it to the time that it's dry, every kind of manipulation that you will do to that hair is adding frizz. It can only add frizz. It can also add more curl. It can also define layers. It can also create movement, but also it's adding frizz on top of that. So there's no way of getting around it. It's just the amount of frizz that you're adding. So I usually tell people if in a perfect world, literally, if you just put stuff in your hair, you sat there and you didn't move until it dried, it's going to be just about as smooth as it can be like that. Unless you're like, you know, if you're letting it air dry or even blow drying it. But the second you add in anything else, it can only add a little bit of frizz. So just pay attention to driving in the car with your windows down. If you're blow drying anything like around you for some reason and the air is hitting your hair, messing with your hair, definitely keep your hands out of your hair while it's drying. All of those things are going to enhance frizz. And if you don't do them, they're going to minimize frizz. Okay. okay. Sorry. There was a lot of people that said absolutely they want you to do that series on like brushes and, you oh, know. Awesome. Good, so good. good. I think it'd be fun. Um, It'll be able to show you guys a little bit more of our vloggy style of work too. I don't get to show that very often. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Lori says, would love a few more ideas for hair that is just wavy, but not curly. And people like me with no cheekbones. <laughs> okay. So cheekbones are always built through volume to me. 
I shouldn't say they're built, but they're accentuated through volume. Anytime we're trying to accentuate, I talk about this all the time in my videos and I feel like I'm a broken record. I feel like you guys are going to get bored hearing this. So, <laughs> but I'll always share it because it's so true. The more volume you have, you got to follow facial structure. So if you look at, we'll use Deanna as an example because it's weird. Okay. If you look at the lines in her face, what do they do? They go this, right? And if I follow that, it comes up here. If I follow her jaw structure, right? Right here, her jaw doesn't go like this. Okay. Her jaw, just like everybody else's, does this. Well, it's starting. My jowls are starting to <laughs> tell the speak other ones. You grow, grow up here like me, and then you don't even see it. I know. I'm always doing this in the mirror. I'm like, well, where did those, those come from? But the facial people's bone structure, and everybody on some level looks like this, right? It might be that they're a little bit more drawn down or fuller or whatever, but underneath your jaw, your legitimate skull, does this. That's how the bones of the structure of the face work. So if we accentuate volume in the points, follow those lines. So you accentuate volume right up in this area because it follows the line like this, right? We're creating volume in here, like kind of like Deanna's is right now. It's tapered in right here and she's got volume right up here above those cheeks. That naturally is going to continue this line from the cheeks up and it's going to accentuate more of this. It's going to lift more of this line. Same thing goes for this volume in here. When you cut that in like that, it's going to take fullness out of the face, draw more lines. So we're trying, first of all, we're trying to figure out how to accentuate cheeks or anything, follow that bone structure and then draw volume wherever that would make sense. Um, oh, oh, sorry. What, what'd you do? You took it away. I, I know. There was more to that question. Oh, I think. Um, and then real quick for, for wavy hair. Gosh, I can't, I can't move it. You're I can't fired. Move the I'm trying to be proactive and try yeah. to find the next question, but it's hard because, because uh -huh. then I can't hide the, well. um, okay. <laughs> anyway. So, um, and then as far as wavy hair goes, wavy or curly, it, it's kind of irrelevant to be honest when you're adding texture into hair, styling ideas are really more based on the cut. So I'm mean, like, you can do updos, you can do like pullback styles, but if you're talking about down styles, that, that's the thing about wavy and curly hair is if you don't accentuate that kind of form in the cut, add layering in certain ways, break up the front with layers so that you have some movement around the face, add some sort of bang in, you know, take the length up. Like if you're not toying with that stuff, then you're only going to get so much of a different look to it because it's kind of like a bob shape. If you don't play with where the volume sits and the way that the bob is, you know, done, it's going to be a bob. A one length bob is just a bob. You can only do so much with it without kind of forming that pile of clay, right? We need to actually mold that clay into something. So as far as styling differences go, cut it is really like, you know, different shapes within the cut. As far as styling process goes, again, just keep your hands out of it, put product in it, minimize the amount that you mess with it while it's drying. Yeah. What he said. What I said. <laughs> See, now, now, now I have to scroll because you didn't allow me to do it before. Um, uh, da, 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 da. Okay. I saw, I saw glam girl Gabby's on here. What's up guys. If you do not know, if you, I'm sure all of you know, glam girl Gabby, but if for some reason you're in a box and you don't know, we'll link your description yeah. or we'll link your channel. And everything great we talked about, we'll try, we'll try to link. I'll just have to watch it again and remember which. So <laughs> Gabby, yeah, Gabby actually was in the video that we just talked about where we did the three, the competition of three. I did the Bob on, on my client. Um, she actually did a, a beautiful makeup work. She does a lot of makeup stuff. She's great for skincare and all that kind of stuff. Uh, she did a great makeup on her client. Look beautiful. Yeah. Sorry. I'm still keep, keep talking. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just looking. This is, this is live, okay? This oh, is. here we go. I think that I think this question um, from Lisa. I'm growing out my gray hair. My colored hair is turning a brass color. Is blue shampoo safe, or will it, or will my gray's roots turn blue? Uh, usually they won't. So this is what I find, and this is not true to every blue or purple shampoo. There, you're going to find both of them. You'll find conditioners and stuff like that as well. Um, it, and I, and I honestly, I want to, first of all, let me just preface this by saying, I don't know that this is true with every shampoo or that they haven't changed this much, but it used to be that the way you used shampoo, blue shampoos or purple shampoos wasn't like how long you left the product on. It was how many times you shampooed it in one time. So like if you would go in there and shampoo your hair with blue shampoo four or five times in the shower, then you're going to deposit more of that potential blue on your hair. And that was kind of the larger concern, whether you went in there and put it on your head and let it sit for 25 minutes, it's not going to do anything more than if you just rinse it out three seconds later. Um, so it shouldn't. But the bigger question is to understand why your hair is actually yellowing in the first place. So what we really want to know is where is the yellow coming from before we even try to figure out will a blue shampoo or a purple shampoo mask that color or tone that color? 
where your color, where that, I don't, and I don't know if you are, like if you're around smokers or if you smoke, that's a big thing about, you know, why hair turns yellow. If you've got hard water, that could also do it. If your hair's, if you've got hard water, if you're on well water or somewhere um, around hard water, you can always get a, uh, there's like a um, shower uh, heads that you can get that will actually filter that iron level or the, the minerals out of your water to kind of keep from doing that. So those are two big reasons that we see people's hair kind of yellow as it grows. Um, another option you have, so blue shampoo can work. I wouldn't stress heavily about it. Just, you know, shampoo it once or twice, and then don't do it every single day. Just kind of monitor how it's going and then kind of, you know, adjust it appropriately. Uh, you can also use toners. So again, red can shades EQ. Um, you can actually find toners in there that are a little bit more of a permanent, not permanent, but they last a little bit longer and they're a little bit more aggressive. Um, so you can also mix that the shades with um, a little bit of the like the gloss, the clear gloss, and so yeah, so both like, those. Usually, that's like the like they usually have like formulas that you'll have to find. You can find and say mix these three things up, and a lot of times I'll mix it with gloss plus mm -hmm. the little developer thing. Um, so yeah, but I wouldn't stress it too bad. Just kind of it. it's not going to happen in one shampoo. Oh, good. That's a good. That's a good question. <laughs> How do you boxer lover? Oh. Uh -huh. Um, so how do you condition your hair if you have a pixie? So, so here's the difference. That's a really good question. That's a really good question. No. So you shampoo and condition when you've got really short hair like mine, you condition and shampoo it all. The difference is your hair is not on your head because it keeps on getting cut short. It's not on your head long enough to really see the detriments of being overly dried out. Like it, it can, but you've got to be pretty aggressive with it. So when you're dealing with longer hair, this hair is living for on your head a lot longer living, but you understand what I'm saying, right? This hair is staying or here a lot longer. So the impact that your products have on it is a lot, it's more in the light. It shows up a lot more. So we just want to take care of that because it's going to be around a little bit longer. When it's short, you're cutting it so frequently that it's not something you need to really stress about. Cool. Um, let's see. I had a haircut, politely fun. Um, I had a haircut with a lot of layers and I'm starting to look like Gene Wilder. I, all, all, all of a sudden I just got, you know, uh, oh my gosh, why don't you just Willy Wonka like, yeah, yeah. My head with like the purple hat and everything. And yeah. Um, what's the best way to grow out, grow these layers out? Um, so a lot of layers. Okay. So, so when I think of Gene Wilder, I also think of, um, I also think of like poison or yeah, um, yeah. Bon Jovi or the wig that you wore in that one. Um, yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> the, I mean, the, the, the easiest way, honestly, is essentially what you do is you, I mean, it's just not the fun way. Right. But the most straightforward way is you let it grow, you bring the length up, you don't touch the layers. You let it grow, you bring the length up, you don't touch the layers. You let it grow. And you keep on doing that until the layers are, are getting longer. That's really the only like quick way you can do it. You only deal with the layers when you look at the ends and you go, those ends need to come off and then you barely trim them. So here is one thing that I want to say. That's, that would be the, again, it's not the fastest, but I mean, it's not the most fun, but it is like the way you grow them out. But here's one thing that I will say. If you're trying to grow your hair out from anything, just get more length to it. And you are told by anyone that you need to come in and every four to eight weeks and get your hair trimmed. Stop it. Don't listen to that. It is complete. I'm sorry, but um, some stylists will argue with me on this, but no, what you need to do is let your hair grow. And so when you go into the salon, especially if your stylist think your hair grows to quarter to half an inch a month. So let's say you're going in every two months, right? And it's grown, let's say a half an inch. And then the stylist goes in and trims a half an inch off. When do you think that's going to get longer? <laughs> you're never going to get. You're longer. never going to see length. You grows a half an inch, another half inch comes up, grows a half an inch. It's going to be enough. So let it get longer until it gets to the point where, like, no, 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 those ends don't look good. Then you go in and you get just as little as possible that needs to take those ends off to make them strong again. And you let it grow again. I used to tell my clients like, if they're trying to get my hair longer, dude, don't come to me for six months. Like, go as long as you can before your ends are ridiculous. Then come in and we'll take a little bit of length off. But they need time to grow. And the whole thought of like, well, your hair will grow faster if you get it trimmed more often. Not necessarily. One, your hair grows from your scalp, not from your ends. But two, if you're paying attention to your ends and they're not just getting broken off and not getting any more length, well, that's when you would need to cut it. But then once they're strong again, just pay attention to them and don't let them get completely broken by like, you know, rubbing against your back and between the chair or, you know, just you gotta pay attention to keeping them healthy and you can go a lot longer. Perfect. So everyday life with Kat. I'm moving to a new town and terrified of finding a new stylist. I cover my roots every Good four works. weeks. How do I retouch my roots at home until I find a new colorist? Any color products that's not box dye? 
Um, so there's actually some solid box dyes too, like that you can do at home. I've got a whole master class on how to cut and color your hair at home that we filmed a couple of years ago. Um, but with that said, I understand the concern of finding the, the stylist. The first thing you need to figure out is if you can get the formula from your old stylist and maybe you already have it because that gives us a little bit of a reference point, at least into what, um, chemicals or what, what, you know, what, what colors they were using. If you're touching up your roots. Now I didn't tell you to do this, but I have heard other stylists or people say that if you can find your, your, uh, if you can get your stylist to give you your, your formula, um, and then you can find maybe another person that's a stylist that can get that formula for you at home. That would be an option. I would never tell you to do that at home, but if you could find somebody to do that, um, maybe you just get it and then you just touch up your roots at home with the formula that they're, they're using. Um, but the, that might be an option. <laughs> I mean, it could, yeah. but don't do that. Definitely do not do that. But don't do that. Yeah, definitely. Definitely don't. Don't, don't do that. Don't do that. <laughs> it's a hor hor horrible idea. Uh, gosh. Uh, okay, well, this doesn't have anything. This is a great question, though, because we love Leavenworth. Best place to get beer in Leavenworth. Ooh, ooh, what's the, oh, gosh, you can't uh, ask because I don't know. The Reinhaus. Reinhaus. That's what we like. We just like to sit outside and eat pretzels with cheese yeah. on it. If you're unfamiliar with Leavenworth, Leavenworth is a town in Washington, uh, Washington State. Eastern Washington. I up in the, it legitimate, it's an old Bavarian, or not an old, but it's a styled like a Bavarian town. It's gorgeous. It, in, okay, I'm telling you, in the wintertime, around the holidays, this is a Christmas globe that threw up, yeah. and there it is. It's, it's amazing. amazing. It is the coolest place, and they have these mountains you sit in this little town and you look up in this like right there there's these mountains they look like the swiss alps it's beautiful yeah it's it's super amazing and the food is good but also beer and brats beer and brats and i am down with some brats um sorry okay keep talking um <laughs> <laughs> You're supposed to have these imagery. So <laughs> <You, you laughs> We're just trying to figure I'm, out this I'm whole fired. live streaming thing. We're you know bear with bear with us, folks. But uh, uh, here we go. Let's just uh, see, let's see what this is. Uh, Denise, hey Justin, um, can you do more videos on naturally curly hair? Not everyone knows how to cut color style naturally curly hair. So a little bit of backstory on <laughs> why I don't do naturally curly hair on my on my channel as much yet. Um, so the thing that a lot of people don't understand about YouTube is so the same reason that I, I title and thumbnail things in a certain way. Okay, I hate personally the idea of make you look older. That's not who I am at the core. It's not what I want this channel to be about. I wouldn't let him be like that. No, I, I, <laughs> I really don't like it. I use that, those words because those are the words that get people to click on things. So to me, I'm like, if I want more people to see this so that they, so I can help more people, I have to first get people to actually click on the video and then to actually watch it. And unfortunately society has taught us that those are the things that they click on. And so when I publish that kind of stuff, it actually gets traction on YouTube and there's a whole algorithm within YouTube that tells you know, what to happen. It's a big thing. So I'm, I'm much more like, Hey, look more youthful or, you know, and, and to me, youthful is just a matter of you looking the best at whatever age that you simply are. <laughs> Same thing goes with curly hair. I'm not a curly hair channel in YouTube's perspective. So when I put out curly hair content right now, it doesn't go anywhere or really see anything because I don't have enough people on the channel to really watch it. So I just haven't at this point because I've really been focused on trying to just get eyes on the channel. And so it's like, well, I want to be a little bit careful about throwing out content that doesn't get watched. Right. It's why I don't talk about color a lot because I'm also not a color. Uh, YouTube doesn't know me as a color channel. Sorry if you can hear our dogs in the background, um, but I do want to do more on it because you are definitely right. There is a bunch of information on curly hair and a lot of it, especially the stuff I see online, a lot of it is trash and a lot of it's just overcomplicated to Sorry. be completely honest. I'm so Betty, stop, please. Yeah, it's okay. Um, so yes, uh, Thank you for your question. Thank you for the suggestion. That's why I haven't so far, but I hope we'll be actually moving forward to do that a little bit more. Perfect. Sorry, I was super um, distracted by them. Yes, I know. <laughs> uh, okay, so let's see here. We got, let's show this. Okay, Josephine says, question, which highlight color for black gray hair? Again, it totally depends. Like there's not just one highlight or color. If you're, or sorry, if you're speaking... If you're speaking oh, about like wow. what actual like like color of highlights do you do? If it's salt and pepper or black gray, I actually go more to not doing highlights and more to doing low lights. So I'm more about adding in the depth to it, um, only because when here's what happens with black and with gray hair, um, and I'm I'm a little bit confused by the question because I could be off on what you're asking here. But if you're talking about just like what color can you add, then anything you add brown, blonde, something like that, you usually 
plays funny with black and white hair and it looks kind of odd and it looks muddy and it just doesn't quite work as well. If you're talking about just trying to like hide the gray, then you would try to add the natural color black into it. If you're trying about like, Hey, I just want to put some highlights in there. What could I do? Like a blonde or something like that. Um, if you're trying to mimic the gray, so you kind of hide the gray in that form, you're going to go really, really, really light before you really hide it um, to the point where it may or may not really work for you. Cause you're not going to get it to the exact point until you get to like white gray. And then you're just going to end up looking like you've got more gray in your hair than anything else. Um, so yeah, it's, it's a tough. I'm not entirely sure if I got that question, right? <laughs> I apologize. Uh, Louise says I have, I have a gray Bob and would like some low lights, some darker low lights. Will they turn yellow over time? This is also a great question. So depends on what color you're using, what the base of that color is. They shouldn't turn yellow. So if you're doing low lights, yes. So if you're doing low lights, that means you're adding a darker color. So in this situation, again, talking about salt and pepper, you're adding black in your hair, essentially very close to it. If it fades, what it could fade to is whatever the underlying pigment of that color is like a brown, you know, like a dark brown, something like that is kind of more what you would see. Um, it won't go to like a yellow because it's not that light to begin with. It's not going to deposit that bright on it. Uh, usually what I find is that, especially if it's dark, like a dark color you're putting on it, like a black, usually what I find is it just kind of fades out and you just kind of don't see it anymore. So it's just kind of like all of a sudden over a few months, you're like, oh, it's just not there. And you know, again, though, also remembering that you're taking smaller pieces. If you take big chunks, any bit of that fade, you're going to see because it's such a large piece to see. But if it's a small piece of chunk, you don't notice that as much. So even if it does fade, you just don't really see it. And so yeah, keep that in mind as you're doing as well. Oops. Oh, I, I did. Hey, that. thank you. I appreciate that. Oh, yeah. I, I didn't mean to. I thought it was okay. Anyways, yeah. Westport, Oregon. Huh. Um, let's see what we got here. See, do you got what level of five or six would you use for low lights on white hair? Um, what level, i.e., five or six? So on white hair, I three, three or four at the highest. Actually, don't go to, I, I usually say three, four. Usually, I use like a level three. I have used a level two in some, in certain circumstances, but usually, I mean, I, sorry, a level one, but usually that's on somebody that's got like naturally black hair. But so more often than not, I'm at like a level three, sometimes a four, but, or a mixture, but somewhere in that, I don't go above four though for myself. See, I could switch these. I didn't have to hide and do this. It's so much mm -hmm. easier. Uh <laughs> fun, fun question only. I like it. What was your favorite place you filmed outside while you did? Oh my gosh. So you did so many. Yeah. Yeah. We live around the Portland area. Uh, still well, now we live in Bend. Pacific Northwest. Yeah. In the Pacific Northwest. So there's so many hikes and I've done all of them. I still think one of my, Oh no, I know my favorite a hundred percent. And I, this is what kills me. My favorite place I've ever been. It was a hike that I went on near Mount St. Helens and it is the most beautiful, beautiful scenery I have in my life ever seen. I had no idea what to expect. I thought when I showed up, I was like, this is trash. This is going to be a horrible hike. It's like a nature walk. Like I like going on hikes. It means I'm going uphill and I want to be away from people so that I can film and not have to like get in anybody's way. And I want a view, which means I'm going straight up for a long ways high. This place was a nature walk with like where you stop and there's like plaques. And I was like, Oh, this is like going through a park. This isn't a hike. Oh, it was. And you know what? I have no idea where it was. I, for the life of me, cannot remember what that hike was called. I don't know how to find it. It is the most, I have looked for that for so many times. I'm like, I want to go back there so bad. It was, it was it, like, I've never seen anything like it. I want to film the video for this view doesn't suck. That view doesn't suck. Oh, that's that place. Yeah. And I don't know how to get there. It's driving me crazy. <laughs> yeah. PNW has a lot of beautiful. Yeah. It's, we're, we're very blessed for yeah. sure. Um, Linda, Again. she says she uses, uh, just e frizz when she air dries her curly hair and it's been amazing. So awesome. Yeah. Thank you, Linda. I, I like love that, that feedback a lot. Um, and I mean, I mean, Linda's your number one OG, <laughs> yep, OG she is. supporter too. So Let's go down on my stools. Oh, yeah, go, go okay. It. Um, Amy says, how can I finally decide whether to keep my pixie or let it grow? This is, that, that's a tough question. Really? Um, you know how you can decide it? You can decide if you want to let it grow by starting to let it grow. If you're feeling like you're like, hey, I'm kind of over this. I, I need to make the decision. You're probably wanting to make the decision. That's my guess. Because if you're just stoked with what you have and you love it, you don't think about wanting to change it. Then really, you know, you're so happy. You're like, why would I want to do anything different? This is amazing. So if those thoughts come in your head, here's your worst case scenario. You start letting the top grow out a little bit. You keep the side short again, like we talked about earlier. And then you start letting some length get in and just kind of see what happens. And understanding that you might get some length and realize, Man, I just wasted the last eight months getting it down to my chin and I hate it. 
Okay, then you cut it back. You can always cut hair off. It's much harder to get it long again. So see where you end up, you know? I say try it. Okay. And it doesn't always work best to have an idea in mind either. Sometimes just get length and see what happens. Yeah. I just have to share this, that, that Linda is putting us in the same category as Matt Rife. So I'm just <laughs> <laughs> Linda, we, we, we were really excited to meet you one day too. I'm sure that will happen. It will and happen. You might be as cool as Matt. I am not as cool as Matt, but I am. I, I am. I am as cool as Matt. Uh, I'm just going to say, we that's watched fair. this Netflix special on Wednesday yeah, yeah, yeah. air. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, want, I want a $25 million contract. <laughs> yeah. um, da, 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 sorry. Um, okay, here we go. We got here. Leslie says thoughts on the bob that's shorter in the back. hundred percent. I love it. Well, it depends on how short it goes in the back though. So there's a very fine line. Oh yeah. This. There's an A line. I did an entire video where I talked about this. I think five bob haircuts, you know, to never wear. Um, so here's the thing. Shorter in the back is always good because if you look at, and I don't have a ruler here, but if you look at your, again, we're talking about bone structure in your face. If you look at your bone structure, your bone structure, nobody's bone structure is parallel to the floor. Nobody's is. It just doesn't work like that. It's always angled up. So when you have a line that's parallel to the floor, it looks like it's actually dipping in the back a little bit. And that ends up drawing your eye back and down the shape, which means that everything from the profile, and we have to remember that most people don't do this. They see you like this or like this, because this is awkward, right? <laughs> like you met, like how weird is that? <laughs> Nobody's going to walk up to you like they, so they're seeing, so the profile is as important, if not more important than what we see in the mirror when we look at like this. And so when you look over from the profile and you've got it one length and it's looking like it's dragging, it draws your whole face down this way. So bringing it up and following angle. that jawline angle so it's longer in the front, 100%. Now it gets to a point where it's too far though. If it goes too far and it's too angled, the angle on a bob doesn't actually start in the back of the head because if it did, it would look like this when you looked at it from the back. Like if this was the back of somebody's head, it would look like this. So the, to make it look like it's actually angled, it goes straight and then right at the back of the ear here, this is where that angle basically starts. And then it comes down. So if it's really short and this is really long, that angle is going to go straight. And then it's going to have these little long dog ears that can just kind of hang there. So it's got to be an angle that makes sense. But if it makes sense, 100% all about it. Nice. All right. So Lynn wants to know how to keep her ends from drying out. Well, it depends on one, what shampoo you're using and like kind of why they're dry. So first we've got to figure out why they're dry in the first place, but also are you conditioning? And if so, are you conditioning the ends or are you focusing like a lot of people do mid shaft and roots because they kind of work there and it works the shampoo and conditioner through their hair. And they don't really pay attention to just getting it on the mid shaft and ends, which really want to, where we really want to concentrate it. So, Do you say the mid shaft and ends is where you want to concentrate the shampoo? The conditioner. Oh, okay. Sorry. Um, Sorry if that's what I said. So yeah, the conditioner, mid shaft and end. So really focus on the conditioner. You could try a deep conditioner or a leave-in conditioner. Just be careful about how much you use them because you can over condition your hair too. So keep that in mind, um, which can actually dry it out. It's, it seems very backwards, but it's true. Uh, so yeah, just pay attention to kind of how you're actually conditioning them. And then also pay attention to if you're using like hot tools, how you're using those on your end. So where are you directing that heat? Are you, because a lot of people will put a round brush in there, for instance, and hold their, drop their elbow, hold the heat and it goes up like this, right at the ends on that round brush. Their ends are sitting over the round brush like this and that heat is directed right at them and it can just melt those off. So that kind of stuff too. You really wanna make sure that that heat is not heading directly at those ends. It's actually pointed up and down those ends, kind of like pointed this way, not directly at your palm. So all of those things will, will make a difference, but. Yeah, paying attention to what's drying them out is equally as important. All right, from Ronnie, I have long hair and always have it up. I keep it long because I like long hair. Should I just cut it short? Yeah, that's, I actually thought about this this morning, but I was like, we should do a video that it's like, um, I don't know if you have these days, but I heard somebody else say this, where, you know, you have a bad hair day and you're like, hair up or hair down. Okay, my hair is just driving me crazy. I'm just going to put it up, but I don't want to cut it. Because I like the long hair because it's, it's either safe or it's familiar. Um, but yeah, it's like when you spend your hair, you know, if I don't know, I, I do that too. If I'm like, my hair doesn't look right, I'm just like up in a ponytail. So that's a really great question. Yeah, I don't think you're alone with this at all. I think this is probably like one of the biggest questions I get as a stylist is like, how do I navigate when that's time to actually go for something different, anything different? Mm -hmm. um, here's the thing. If your hair is always up and you like it up, like you feel like, oh, not like you like it up means it's just not, it's, it's easier for you to manage or it gets out of your way. But you look at your face and go, I like what it does for me when it's pulled back off of my face. I feel comfortable in this. 
I feel confident in this, man. I can rock this, man. This looks good. I want. I'd rather have it in a ponytail and be styled out than have it down, right? If that's you, then yeah, I would say go for it. Like cut it shorter, but also recognize that there are going to be a, there's going to be a payoff for this. You're going to spend a lot more time styling it than you do currently because you are pulling it up. You're going to spend a lot more time like with hair in your face or around your face because don't cut it short or shorter and then try to get it back in a ponytail all the time, right? Like pay attention to the potential concerns, which is likely why you're on the fence because you've thought about those. Um, but if you've thought about those and you still feel like, oh, I still feel like maybe I want to, then you won't know until you do. And here's what I will say. I had a client, a really good client, beautiful woman went, would never, like she had longer hair and I was talking to her forever. I'm like, let's cut your hair short. I know it sounds crazy. I don't usually do this. I'm very much like, let's figure out what works for you. I was like, let's just cut your hair short. You could rock, like it would look so good on you. You would kill it. No, never do it. Well, unfortunately she battled cancer. She lost all of her hair and she's fine now. But when she, when it grew back, you know how long that hair was short for a long time. It was in a pixie. She's like, I wish I would have done this before. I was like, yeah, I do too, because it looks amazing on you, right? But sometimes it just takes, you know, like that step to just go for it. And you realize, I wish I would have done this so much sooner. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you know the answer to this question. You might, or you might not. Washing your hair in beer, good for your hair. Tamara, I have no idea. <laughs> Honestly, I, have I appreciate no idea. I appreciate your honesty. Um, although I want, although I feel like that's a video idea as well. We washed your hair beer for four days and so, or for a month. And so what happened? Here's what happened. My hair got drunk. Dude, hundred percent. That's a video. It turned curly. Okay. If you want to see that video, <laughs> comment below. I, I feel like that we, just for a month, all we do is wash your hair and I just beer. stink like hops. Oh, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you, you probably can't go to, I feel like you can't go to work like that though. Coming okay. into work every day, feeling like, like, have you been drinking? No. <laughs> nope. Just my hair. Your shampoo. <laughs> And what kind of beer do you use? So many questions. Yeah. Do you do like, it, do you do like a light beer? Do you do like a Hefeweizen? Do you maybe do, you got to go Porter, like go maybe, all in on just a steak I beer. I don't know. Maybe. maybe I don't know. Gonna, so many questions, research. but I love it. Thank you for bringing that up, Tamara. That will be a video. I'm going to do that's a bucket video right there. That is okay. We're doing that. All right. So we got Oregon, Oregon where, so we were in Portland slash Vancouver. I grew up in Portland, Vancouver, Washington, not Canada. People yeah. didn't know there's a Vancouver, Washington. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I grew up around Portland. The salon's in Portland, um, but now we live in actual Redmond. So Redmond, right, Bend, Bend area. Yeah, near Bend. Mm -hmm. So Eastern Oregon now. Central Oregon. Eastern Central Oregon. No, it's Central. It's kind of close to the eastern side. Central. <laughs> <laughs> ASMR? Um, <Just> Central. <laughs> <laughs> Deanna, have you ever considered cutting your hair to a bob? Absolutely. So I've had it. Actually, when we were in the van, I think I did a lob. I did a like a longer version of a bob. So I think it was about right here. And every like few years, I get a bug in my booty. And I'm just like, you know, it's I just, I mean, I love long hair. But then sometimes I'm like, ah, oh, I, I want to shorten it. My, my biggest issue that I have with a bob, and we were actually talking about this the other day, because I was like, I think I want to cut my hair into a bob. But then, then I fell in love with my hair again. So it depends on the day. It depends on my attitude, you know perimenopause has got, got my emotions all up and down. So some days I'm like, it all off. I just don't want to deal with it anymore. Um, but what I find is I like my hair wavy because my hair is stick straight. And so when I cut my hair into a bob, the curl pattern that I typically do with long hair then changes. So like I have to figure out how to use my curling iron again for the new length because you can't get as many curl waves. Does that make sense? No. Um, but yes, I absolutely like, I was like, okay, this winter I told him, I'm like, if you shave your beard off, I'll cut my hair into a bob. Not that I don't love his beard, but you know, it's like, you know, sometimes you just want a new husband or something, you know what I'm saying? So <laughs> I look back at photos. I'm like, oh man, I don't know, man. I thought I'd never wear a beard. And I don't know. Yeah, he, I, it took forever to convince him to actually grow a beard. He's like, I can't grow a beard. I'm like, just I try. Just and he's like, oh, it, it's just so bad. I'm like, just leave it alone. And he clearly can. And so I'm like, when you cut it, I'll cut my hair. We'll just be different different people. We'll have new husbands and wives. There we go. <laughs> um, I want to say a, a real quick thank you so much, uh, Jamar. That was very sweet of you. You totally don't have to do that, but I very much appreciate it. We know we've got Linda we talked about before. She's awesome. I also want to say a big thank you to Kate. I'm glad that uh, this has been fun. I know yeah. We're having a lot of fun. I know. Right? This is really fun. Yeah. So, so uh, we're loving it. So I appreciate the fact that you guys are actually having a good time. And if you want us to do more of these lives or whatever, then, uh, you know, this is just something we're trying on the channel. We're just going to see how this goes. So yeah. let us know if this is something that you're interested in seeing. Um, okay. Let's see. We've got more. 
All right, right here we've got uh, Everyday Life with Cat. You already did that one. You oh, did you already do this one? See, okay. Yeah. We're, we're down a ways. Oh, you just, um, I'm sorry. I'm not yeah. good at this. See, that's why I was in charge. You gave me this. Jo you gave me one job and then you took it over. Okay, let's see what happens when I do it. Okay, does anybody else's spouses do this when you're like, oh, I'm doing something, whether or not it's cleaning the house or dishes or hanging something, and you're like 95% done, and then all of a sudden your spouse comes and takes it over so he can like complete the job? That's him, 100%. I'm like, really? You just did the fun part that was like super easy. Mm. That's my pet peeve. Somebody asked, "What's your pet peeve?" That's one of them. Another, he doesn't uh, he doesn't load the dishwasher correctly, and I have to redo it. <laughs> Other than that, you're perfect. <laughs> <laughs> That's a lie. All right. Uh, so I ask, actually, I asked the question. The last question: If if uh, hair is long enough to go to a bob, would that work with curly hair? My hair is poker straight, but poker straight, but best cut I had was a bob, and it grows out nicely. Mm. So I think she's asking for another person that um, had curly hair. Yeah. Um, so absolutely. I mean, like that, this is the beautiful thing about bobs is they function for every haircut. The one thing I would say about curly hair specifically when you come to bobs, it's because of the lengths. So you're looking at basically like between your collarbone and say your chin area, this length of hair, if your hair is curly is naturally going to inherently get a little bit more volume at the very bottom. So on curly hair, you really want to focus on having some layers to break up that shape a little bit, or otherwise it's going to get very full, right? So as long as you have layers though, a hundred percent. And so here's something when I, when I actually cut and some people, some people like there'll probably be some curly hair folks who are like, I can't believe he does that. That is the stupidest thing. But this is the way that I've been able to reproduce the same curly hair. So when I have a client that comes in, they've got a bob shape, right? I do this specifically with bobs and they've got curly hair and they come in and like, I want the same thing you did last time. It was perfect. Da, da, da. I do the same thing. I repeat it every single time. And the way I do it is I actually flat iron the hair straight and I cut it forward straight. And then when we dry it curly, I know that everything we did was basically the same. And a lot of people will say that that doesn't work. It functions just fine. I've never had a problem with it. So that is an option as well. All right. Mm -hmm. So... We have music lover. I like to change my style all the time. Am I the best or worst kind of client? I mean, I feel like you, I feel like you're, I feel like there's pros and cons, right? So what, to me, what makes a good client isn't so much what you do with your hair. It's the person that's sitting in my chair because I'm hanging out with you for 45 minutes or half an hour, whatever it is. Right. So like if you're fun and you're willing and you're open to do some cool stuff, sweet, you're great. If you're fun and you're like fun to hang out with and you're like, Hey, I just like this one thing. We just rock with it. Cool. Then we have a chat about something else. You know, um, the only time that that changing your hair can become problematic is if you change it all the time and we're talking about color, right? I like it dark. I like a light. I like it dark. I like a light. I want to go to red. I want to go to blonde. That's when it becomes like, okay, that's a little harder because we need to think that your hair is going to stay on your head. I don't know that it's going to. <laughs> if we continue to do this, let's step it back a little bit. But as far as cuts go, I'm down to constantly change. That's always fun. Yeah. Um, this is from Susan. She says the best style for plus size women, long and straight or short and choppy. So this all, I mean, it depends partly on even like height and stuff, but usually speaking when you're talking about, so this is something I think a lot of people don't take into consideration is body frame when you look at hair. Okay. So I have seen plus size women that rocked really short hair and it looks epic on them, amazing on them. But a lot of it has to do with the person and their conf confidence and comfort within that shorter hair or just within themselves in general. If you're like, let's say that you're a shorter person and you've got really, really long hair. It's like down in the middle of your back and it's really full. It's going to overpower you. So it's going to be, all you're going to be is hair walking on the street, right? So a lot of cases, like if you're a smaller frame person, then you want your hair to be in some cases a little bit shorter or something. So it doesn't look like it's so much hair going on. Kind of the opposite can happen when you're talking about full frame is you look at shorter hair and you go, well, now you look like a pinhead because like there's body and then there's just like, there's just nothing up here. And a little bit of hair can actually work really well. But I think it's so person to person in reality, because if you feel confident in short hair and you can rock like a Mohawk style, that kind of thing, right. Where it's got a lot of like a pompadour kind of thing where it's got some volume on top tight on the sides and you're in your clothing, you like, you kind of rock those clothes too or whatever, you know, like, I mean, I personally love that look, you know? So mm -hmm. I think it's a person. I don't think there's a right or wrong is what I'm getting at. But do I, I do think taking in body composition into the, into the game is an important thing to factor in. But, you know, I think at the end of the day, what you feel best in is going to overweigh any sort of opinion. Yeah. This is a good question. I don't know if you know the answer, but I know you're familiar with this product. 
Just oh, I use it. I, I yeah. color my beard. You so, think this this is not? Yeah, he's this got like color. so much white oh, right hair and like under hair. So yeah, don't get it twisted. And you've you've actually you have you used um just for men on your hair? I too? tried. I didn't like it on my hair. Yeah. On my hair. No. Um. Okay. So it's just for men hair color. Okay to use judging your roots. Um. The whole just for men thing. It's it's just marketed towards it's, men. It's right? marketing. So yeah, yeah I, I mean yes, you can. My only my only concern about that is the ones I've used specifically, they don't, uh, and it doesn't say anywhere on, I mean, I haven't looked that deep, but I haven't seen anywhere on where it says like semi-permanent or demi-permanent. It shows like five minutes in and you're good to go. And I'm like, you don't get coverage in five minutes. Like you want coverage. And I know I don't. So could you, maybe, um, probably you could, I don't think it'd be a lot of damage to it. And the only other concern is there's not a lot of variance in the colors and the color selection. Yeah. So you're kind of limited. And I have found that the, especially dark, let's see, what did you say? Um, so it depends if you're dark, I've noticed that, uh, they all have a very, um, kind of like a warm red base to them or the ones I've used. And so when they fade, they look kind of almost orangey and I'm not a fan of that at all. So uh, also this depends on your hair color. So you probably could, but there's just better options. Yeah. I mean, like, Maybe in a pinch, but. Oh, this is a good. Oh my gosh. So Deb, what do you think about the solid shampoo bars like from Kitsch? I literally just heard about Kitsch a couple days ago mm -hmm. and it was my first time like going on Instagram and checking them out. And I'm like, I'm really curious about this. So I was wanting to buy some and, and try it out. We should try it out. So honestly, I have not used them. They have a conditioning bar. Yeah, like I don't know. But I did see. Um, so sorry, I can't speak authentically to that, to, to answer that for you. Um, I did see, and I actually wanted to try this too. I thought this might be another video, a bar that's supposed to change your hair color back to your natural color, not coloring it. It's supposed to make your hair grow back to your natural color in like a few weeks. I was like, I call it <clears throat> because no. So I'm going to buy that bar oh, and yeah. shave my hair with it every day and see what happens. And if it all of a sudden my hair color turns this color, I'm be like, <laughs> what? You know, you know what I no. want to do? So if you guys have heard of any of these things, drop it in the comments, like, you know, products and, and, and things like that, that, that claim to do certain things, right? Because yes. I'm like, always, we're willing to test stuff out and you know, what works and what doesn't, or if things sound too good to be true, I want to try them out because they probably are. Definitely. <laughs> definitely. I'll let you go back to, oh. go back, go back okay. to work. Go oh, anyway. what do you pay me? Um, <laughs> Okay, let's see. Uh, Lori, I use a small amount of rosemary oil on my ends after styling. Is that this okay for my hair? I like how it feels and smells, but maybe it's not actually helping. I don't know that it's helping, helping. Like, I don't know that it's conditioning your hair. Let's put it that way. But the the idea of helping really gets more into what you like, if that makes sense. Um, if it's helping you, if it's giving you a result that you're liking and it's not hurting your hair, which it's not going to hurt your hair. I don't really see a problem with it, right? So I guess, I mean, the answer is like, hey, if it doesn't weigh your hair down, like the concern on using it on other formats would be that, oh, maybe it builds up on your hair, which if it's not doing on your hair, you're not noticing that. Or it's weighing my hair down, it blades really flat, it interacts with my other products, I can't get the volume I'm looking for, the style or shape. You know, those are the concerns that we'd be looking at. But in your case, if you like what it's doing, then yeah, I mean, like there's no reason, like I, not that I'm aware of, correct me if I'm wrong, if there's something that I'm unaware of that rosemary oil does that's like, hyper damaging to her let me know but not that i've heard of should be fine i feel rude always looking down and not looking at you guys so so my apologies um <laughs> where do you eat pizza i live in oregon oh my gosh we make our pizza every 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 time most time however there's a place here what's that place called that we used to get abby's abby's, abby's legendary yeah. pizza i i love a good thin crust and i think that they're really good but typically yeah we buy the crust and then we put all the toppings on there yeah. i put the works and he just puts pepperoni and zucchini we bought the house that we have now and our um, real estate agent when, once we closed he bought us a pizza oven because he knows we do that you know so now we have this pizza oven in our uh, outside and on the porch and i'm like oh that's the coolest thing ever yeah. we're learning curve but yeah, yeah. Our, our original thing go ahead and look our original thing with with uh, pizza sundays like every sunday night was because we worked out a lot we were very strict about what we ate and so pizza night was kind of like our all right this is our cheat meal but to me it was like well if we can make this ourselves then we can control the amount of cheating that we're doing here right we have like a reasonably not healthy but healthier crust maybe or that we're at least not layering it up with so much junk that we know where everything's coming from we can get some veggies on there and so it's like it feels like you're cheating and it's great it's pizza but it's not overboard that's kind of where we came from that's why we still tend to like make it at home but yeah, then we got in a place where we're just like eating dominoes and just junk all the time. And we're like, sweet, that's <laughs> nice. Yeah, 
and mm-hmm. and you know yeah, the perimenopause nice. weight. I'm like, where did this extra 15 pounds come from, and why can't I lose it? Yeah. So, yeah. so now <laughs> we, we, we so if you have that. any tips on that, like let me know because I'm still trying to find the 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 reasons for that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Shirley says, how to get style to do how to get style to do better with foils. Stylus. Yeah. A stylus. I cannot read. I don't no, know why I'm that's, trying. That's why um, I got my glasses on. Yeah. I wound up with obvious stripes. Yeah. Uh, you don't get stylists to do better with foils. Unfortunately, you find a different stylist. Yeah. I mean, I wish I could say it differently, but yes, if you're coming back with bleed marks, that's what that is. The stripes, um, likely, I'm assuming you're talking about horizontal stripes. So that's when you put hair in foils, you put on bleach, whatever, you get it a little too close. The bleach expands as it gets hot and then it spills out of the foil, lands on the scalp and it creates this line. Now, the bigger problem with that isn't that the stripes are there. The problem to me is that I've had that happen and as a stylist, you go, okay, I'm going to take color. I'm going to put color on that. And I, you're not leaving the salon until those are gone. So yeah. to me, it isn't the skill set even. It's just the follow through. Hey, if you're going to do something like that, it happens. It happens to the best of us. But you correct it and the, si- the client leaves the salon looking 100% because they're paying for 100% and not paying for 60%. Yeah. Um. What was the brand of the 100 flatter? It's a uh, in for shine in for shine. And we'll, after this, I'll go ahead and find the link to it it's, and we'll put it in the description. It's fantastic. It's really great. It is. Uh, I mean, like not sponsored, definitely not sponsored. Fantastic iron. I reached out to them though, asking if they, they sh- we should work. Well, they, a, we should they, work. They, a they don't respond them, to my emails. <laughs> yeah. And I'll still tell you their product is amazing. Like they don't have to sponsor yeah. for me to tell you that's a, uh, that's a solid iron. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah. Uh, uh, Kate asked who is Matt Rife. So, well, you, you just have to Google him. Yeah, he, he's he a comedian. Be, he's a comedian. May or may not be your cup of tea. He's, yeah. a, he's a little controversial, but he's adorable. He, he's like he, the, almost the same age as my my daughter. Yes. <laughs> so, yeah. Very, very um, true. Uh, da, 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 da. Here we go. Uh, Mary, I have had a bob in the past, and it looks and feels like I'm wearing a helmet. What can I tell my stylist to do different? More than, so there's two things that are probably going on. One, styling, the actual styling process, and two, the cut. So first we deal with the cut, and that's what you're going with stylist for, and likely you just need more layers, a little bit more texture. So a lot of times if it's one length, it's going to have a tendency to look like a helmet. It's really hard to get movement in a one-length cut. Okay, so we start adding a little bit of layers. It kind of gives it that, breaks that up. So that would be the first place. Now, if you've already got layers in your hair, then it's likely not the – cut the stylist that's creating that that helmet feel it's the lack of movement after you style it so if you're spraying it or if you're using a volumizer that's just too stiff and your hair is stiff because you want it you get it right you want it to stay there that's what actually creates the helmet look is it needs a little bit of that free-flowing movement so we need a foundation to give it the volume and shape but we also need to actually let that shape kind of have some move Um, the other thing you want to potentially do is again color if it's all one color, like natural color, maybe if you had it colored, all one color, many times that can look kind of helmety, helmety because typically speaking, natural color isn't actually one tone. It's what we call tone on tone. It's a multitude of different tones that look very similar that give it a little bit of dimension when the light hits it. And so even adding some dimension to your color might be a good step in the direction, but I would pay attention to how you're styling it. Flat ironing actually does a really good job of giving it movement. Um, oddly enough, it doesn't seem like it would, but it can. I just want to share this this comment by Calista. Oh, gosh, um, for I mean, it's for she was saying to try Madison Reed. She was responding to um, everyday life with Cat um, to try Madison Reed. They can help you get the right color. We've actually partnered yep. in the past with Eastalon, yep. um, and we've used their their products, and they're a really great resource as well. Yeah. So tr- check out Madison Reed. Check out Eastalon. This is I mean, so exactly the reason that we uh, um, like kind of make curly hair more curly hair content, and I'm like I don't do color content either. I love like Madison Reed is fantastic. I love I also love Eastalon. They're great companies. They have good product lines. They do it really well. 100 stand behind them. We used to work with Eastalon like we brand partnered, you know, because I'm like. You're, you guys are fantastic. I totally believe they have, in you. They have stylists that you can actually talk yeah. to and they help you formulate the proper color. 100%. I believe, if you're doing it at home, I believe in that 100%. But unfortunately, because it's color-based and my audience isn't color-based, those videos never got traction. Nobody would ever see them. And I felt so bad. I was like, I can't, you guys, you know, like, yeah. we can't partner together because I'm not doing you guys a service. Um, but absolutely, you should check them out. They're fantastic. Um, do, 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 keep talking. <laughs> you know I'm not going to just... Well, I actually, I can't, I can't, <laughs> you actually, you are. Too good um, to talk to. Did, 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 but I get sidetracked too because I want to see what the comments are, so I don't want to miss anything. So 
then I end up going yeah. through through them all. No, I think um, I think we're I think that's. About do you have any questions from Instagram, real quick, before we oh. before we hop off, and then we'll leave you guys um, alone because I know we've been on your on your feed for a long time. Um. Well, my mother in law asked what I wanted for Christmas. Oh, that's, all, <laughs> that's a whole other question. Um. Somebody asked, "How did you guys meet?" Okay. Um. Do you guys want to know how we met? We, we like, give them the short story. We, we don't have to give them the long story, do we? Okay. So um, why, don't, why don't you why don't you tell them oh, your, yeah. your 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 opinion on it? Okay, so we met on Facebook. That was it. Okay. That was all. We just met on Facebook. We met on Facebook um, through. They had like this weird app that was kind of a dating app, but I didn't do dating apps, so I didn't really know it was a dating app. Um, I just gotten out of a, a relationship, so I was not interested in meeting anybody at all. But I was looking to have new experiences, right? Like maybe expand my horizons and and meet new people and stuff like that. And this dude full of tattoos pops up and I was like, well, he's kind of cute, but gosh, my first thought, he's got all these tattoos. Clearly he's been in prison <laughs> and I'm a mom of two young ones. So I'm just like, oh, I don't know. But then I was like, okay, so you like click this button. I guess he gets a notification that I clicked a button and then he's like, I'll let you take it from there. <laughs> Well, I get these emails, right? That say like so and so from so and so is interested, and it's always like so and so from you know the Ukraine is interested. I'm like, yeah, okay, it's like a scam email thing, and then I get one that says you know so and so from Washington, Diana from Washington is interested, which means I'm like, okay, she clicked on me, so I know that if I actually ask her out, it's probably going to be a pretty good chance she'll say yes. I looked at her photo, I was like, oh, she's really cute. She's from Vancouver, like that's right across the river. Crazy. I was like, well, I mean, I guess nothing to lose here. Well, you know, so I'm like, I, I, I don't want to sign up for this little thing because I don't want to pay for it. So it's like, I'll just <laughs> Google or I'll just go on Facebook and search Diana. It's a pretty obscure name. And sure enough, her profile came up with her little profile photo. And I was like, add friend, send message. I promise I'm not a stalker. I hope this doesn't sound creepy, but I noticed you here and you said this. Um, hi. <laughs> <laughs> Awkward. <laughs> Basically, that was probably, probably how yeah. it. I'd like to say that it was like way more smooth than that. No, no. it wasn't. Cause I was, no. I was like, the first time we met, I was like, really like I had, I had my walls built up. Right. Ladies, you know what I'm talking about. You're just like, you ain't going to tell me what to do, how to do it. I'm like, I'm, I'm coming like this. And if you have a problem with this, then we're not going to work out. And then he's just like, Hey, so we actually had our first date was what, what do we say? Four, uh, four or five, five dates. dates. So we started with an afternoon sushi. Then we went to Starbucks. Well, so we, oh, we met at sushi and that was the date. And then after sushi, we were like, you want to? I was like, well, I'm about to go to church. It's Saturday. I'm about to go to church at night. It seems weird, I know, but do you want to roll? She's like, sure. I'm like, okay, well, we got a little bit. Do you want to go over to Starbucks and grab a coffee on the way? She's like, okay. So we went and hung out at Starbucks where she made fun of me because my feet didn't touch the ground when I sat down on a chair. I'm, tall, a chair. I'm taller than he is, and his feet would just go. <laughs> yeah, she started <laughs> laughing at me. First date. Yeah. She knows how to make a man feel good. <laughs> and uh, then we went to church. Very awkward church it, thing. I mean, very like, awkward church. Experience. Cool church, but like, I'm not, a, I don't. Long story, like I don't pray out loud. I've just never been that guy, you know. Like, like, hey, everybody, let's pray out loud. Pray together. I'm like, this is so awkward. No, <laughs> um, so we, you know, did that it was great. And then we're like, well, you know, I'm hungry. You want to go get some food? So we went to Red Robin, and got some dinner. And then we're like, Are you hungry? I want to get some dessert. And we're like, okay. So then we went over to, like the yogurt place. I got dessert. And then finally, we we're like, okay, we probably yeah, should leave we, now. We should so. separate. So we are, yeah. Our first date turned into how many ever that was. And yes, that was you're a total lot. gentleman. Didn't kiss me until the third date. The nope. third day hey as as much of a thug as i might look i'm actually uh not that horrible of a human and i'm sure you're wondering okay. he's never done any time in prison <laughs> <laughs> they can't catch me it's just me being <laughs> <attention>. <laughs> yeah. um, okay we'll ask him one last question then we'll take off and leave you guys alone um so well actually we we'll answer two how many kids do we have so i have two step kids she has two kids kids and then two grandkids and then two good grandkids yeah um and then one last one is a. Uh, oh, that's a good question about. I think um, how much does a. Oh, that one. Yeah. Uh, how much does a person's neck length play into a style? I, I'd say a lot. It plays into a style. So I mean, <laughs> I don't know the easy way of answering it, but it depends on the style. But you know, absolutely. So it just depends on if you want to elongate or if you want to like kind of draw less emphasis to the style, length of the neck. Um, it can play a role in how long or short you take bobs, how tight you take necklines, or how long you leave necklines. And there's, it plays a lot. It should play a lot into it um, or hair growth and the neckline too, even yeah. for how long it is, just where the hair grows should be playing a lot into it. Um, and then let's see, we are right here. Uh, I was just talking to another. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, I just have to say, I love like this community and you know, yeah. that I'm only kind of a small 
piece in it. And so when I get to be a part of it, I love it because I'm so community based and to see everybody like helping and supporting other people, it just makes me smile. So yeah. I, I love it. We, we're, we're pretty lucky here. We have the best or you have the best community. I'd say, I mean, I say we, yeah. it's our channel, it's my channel, but it's ours. <laughs> um, and then Deb asked, uh, where is our new salon? So I've only got one salon. It's in downtown Portland, like in the heart of downtown Portland, right across the street, Pioneer Square. Um, so there are currently three, four, the three main stylists that are there. One's only there like one day a week. Um, Danielle, John, and Sharon. So they are all there. I'm actually not behind the chair. So when we decided to move and start driving around, you know, like the United States travel, I actually stepped away from being behind the chair at my salon because I can't do both things. And we really needed to focus in on our social media, this business, um, and, you know, try to travel. So it's kind of like the culmination of everything we'd worked for for 10 years. I finally had to say, okay, we've been working at this to build this, to put us in a place where we could actually go travel and do the things we wanted to do. And all those things I can't do behind the chair, but unfortunately, I mean, I had to step away from the chair. However, I do have some things in mind where we talked about doing this when we were traveling, but it just didn't work out. It was an overwhelming traveling yeah, experience. It was not what we thought it was going to be. <laughs> um, but now that we are kind of located in one spot, we've settled down a little bit. Um, there are some things that I have in mind over you know the next year, a couple of years of the channel that I think would be fun to go do some kind of. I don't want to say guest. I hate like I'm not, it's not, it sounds so like I'm not that, but you know what I mean, like go make some appearances at salons where we like actually get to interact with some of you guys and, mm -hmm. some, and do some, some meetups. Haircuts and, like yeah. I've, I've been thinking about that, like meetups, but I was like, who would actually want to like, I know it sounds so I... weird, man. Like, <laughs> like, like just get like, have a happy hour together. I think yeah. it'd be great to see people in person. Like I love the connection yeah. piece. So if, if you're like, in this area, or would you come for like a, a meet and greet or a happy hour or totally. like, Hey, let's go have a drink at a place and just talk. And I know you see us here, like on this camera thing, <laughs> but like, it's so not uh, like, and honestly, normal. I'm just with him all day. We're in a new place where I don't know anybody. And I really want some connection with some other women because uh, spending all day, every day with him. Oh, I love him, but dang, I need, I need some communication with, with, with women here fair all right <laughs> with that said we want to say a huge thank you to all of you who hung out and i appreciate you thank you if you weren't able to catch us live and you hung out and watched this entire thing and if you have any other questions definitely do not forget i will stick around to try to answer some questions in the comments over the next few days so uh, go ahead and make sure that you answer and i come back and check frequently anyway so even if it's been passing throw your question in the comment we can get back to it and uh, get an answer for you otherwise uh, we will be going live again i'm sure this is fun so i'm sure we'll happen again and uh, we will see you all next Tuesday in next Tuesday's video. That's right. All righty. I can't say see you next Tuesday. See you next week. See you next week. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. Bye.